Hey, 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 put, put everything up. I lean, you know, I need everything up. Energy, 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 energy. You already know what it is, man. You know how we coming. Kitchen talk. It's not a love show. It's not a cooking show. It's we, not a wrestling show. It's, but it's a champion. It's that's champion music. It's and not about like wrestling. It's you. 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 you I don't see too champions much. coming out to that song. That type you, of music. See, that's your problem, though. Sounds like you, wrestling. It's, it's okay. You got champions in wrestling, don't you? You got it. Okay. You got it. All right. You went to Woo! It's your town. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, you know what it is, man. Shout out to the to the whole gang, man. Big shout out to uh, Coach Golf. Shout out to Nash, Petey, you know, A.K. McNugity. Uh, big shout out to my man, uh, Squeaks. And shout out to the lovely lavish, lavish catering, lavish lifestyles, Pearls Monroe, big stuff in the building. Lavish lifestyle, you know what I mean. Style. Um, I want to, I want to shout out uh, two other people because on my on my list of shout outs, I mean, it's two. I, I want to shout you out, but that'll make it three. I hear you. Let me shout out the Holloman Rock. Shout out to Holla. And. My brother, uh, Ricky Hustle Hard. Fat Ricky from uh, Fulton Street. He will be back soon. We miss you, Rick. We miss Rick, man. Definitely, but he will be back, man. Shout out to my brother, uh, Sino Mike in the building. It's a very special episode today, man. Brooklyn is in the building. Definitely. Brooklyn is in the building. And before I introduce... Damn, come on, Herbie. Everybody. <laughs> is it hot in here? Hold on, let me... I mean, you got on a lot of stuff. Let me, let me. It's hot. Yeah, y'all been in here opening windows too. Um, before I introduce this good brother, I I, I want to say I want to I want to uh I want to I want to touch on something that I haven't touched on publicly. I want to say um, big shout out to this guy, man. Um, y'all know him for a lot of years. Um, y'all watched him grow. Y'all watched him stand next to the, the greatest of all time. Y'all watched him be a part of a legendary movement. Um, the one and only Lil C's, Caesar Leo, the motherfucking great. What's up, my brother? How you been? How you been? Good, good, good. Nice good to, to see you, my brother, all day. Good to, good? good to have me. Yes. Good to have you, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad you, I'm glad yeah, you pulled up to the already. kitchen. You, you came in. Drink. You came in, Lil. You fed me as soon as I got here, dog. That's how we move in here. Like. That's how we move in here. Pearl's yeah. Monroe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Brooklyn. Big shout out to Brooklyn, man. Yeah, for life. Man. I got a lot to for talk life. about, man. I got I got a lot to ask you, man. I got a lot to uh, you know, it's it's a lot of things I wanna I wanna I wanna know. But before I tap into that, I wanna say that um very early on my career, um when I first got out of prison, I was a different person. All right. Um I wanna say that. There was a lot of stuff going on very early on. Me and C's clash. Uh, I don't know if a lot of y'all remember that, but for the ones that do, I just wanted to touch on that, that I was glad to uh, get to a place that, that I could grow, you know what I'm saying, and, and that I could get to, you know, to a, a different type of development because, you know, we, we, we had so much in, um, in common, a lot of the same people from the door, right? So it was like, I went to school with your sister. I knew Kim. You know, yeah, I was already tied in with Cino Mike and Mouse and everything. So, um, you know, things happen. And but what I will say is that at the time, you know, me coming home from prison, I was a, I wasn't as advanced mentally as I as I should have been because I was just getting out of can. Had a lot of energy and everything was just like go 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 go. So, you know, when you are coming from that environment, you are coming from only knowing how to quarrel with niggas, you know, it was it was it was it was second nature. You know, you know what I mean. So I'm, I I did a lot of things, and I'm and I'm not, you know, I'm man enough to say that I did a lot of things. And when I look back now, I'm like, damn, why did I? You know what I mean. But that take growth, and I'm glad I was still, you know, still out here to be able to, you know, to look back on some of my past mistakes or look back on some of my past behavior and say that, damn, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. You know what I mean? But that's how you grow. And I'm glad that we was yep. able to get to a place that um, we could move forward and we could get past the old shit and um, 
And I'm glad you're here, my brother. Okay. For Appreciate real. that. No nah, man, nah, you know, nah. I that's, wanted to say that to you. That's coming from a real place, yeah. too. You know what I mean? Because uh, me being young and coming up, how mm-hmm. I came up, like you said, you know, we never had that run-ins from them time, but our history. Right, history. Put us around them same people. Right. Um, me being around real people made me understand where you was coming from, mm-hmm. from your place. Mm-hmm. So I understood you was coming from that, you know. Right. You coming from that turf of where it was right. all like yeah. hands on, it's right. ready to go. And that was the moment of, of that music at that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, definitely. You know what definitely. I mean? It was all, uh, uh, you know, hey, man, if the opportunity come for me, it is what it is. But I knew it wasn't to a certain level because of who we knew and right. what we was around. Yeah. But I understood it the same way you explained to me. Mm-hmm. I understood your side and how you saw it. And how you came with it. And uh, I mean, it could have went so many other ways, but Indeed. it didn't go that way because right. of our history. Right, 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 right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Same way you understood where, where you was going with it, I understood where you was coming from with it. Yeah. And I took it at, I just took it for what it was worth. It's, it's things that happened, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But like you said, you know, through the grace of God, and, you know, we both found growth. I, I learned right. to grow from that. Right, you know what definitely. I mean? Everything definitely. was smooth selling for me, you know, until B.I. passed. And I think that was my, those things that happened, part with you and, Everything else that happened with me with Kim was just my lessons that I didn't get because that's the shit he was trying to keep me away from. Mm. But I still had to find a way to become a man some way, somehow, to where, all right, you got it good at 14 and 13, but you mm. need to really see some things and go through some things before you make it to that next level of being a real man. Right, you know right, I mean? right. And, uh, you know, your situation was definitely a part of me just growing up and experiencing things without having those big OGs and the, right, the, the right, rocks right. and the gutters and the bigs. Right, right. Both of them was in jail and Big was gone. And me and Kim wasn't speaking. So I was kind of like out there alone on my own. And I had to just season and see things for myself. And people make mistakes. You go the wrong way. You experience things. But my shit wasn't that bad. You know what I'm saying? It could have no. been worse. No, you know definitely, I mean? definitely. You know, like your situation could have been worse. But right. we had a little minor situation. Mm-hmm. Some Brooklyn thing. And we handle ours. And we sitting here right now. That's right. Like, That's you know right. what I mean? Like, and at and the time, talk about it. you wasn't. You wasn't you wasn't speaking to Kim and y'all was y'all was going through it, and at the time I was around Kim heavy, so it was a lot of, um, you know, it was it was a lot going on. It was a lot of side no. taking, you know what I mean. And I used to speak all the time during that time. Remember, mm-hmm. I used to see you on eighty year old on me on football. Fact. That's a we fact. We'd be on Bedford while fact. all this was That's actually going on. Me and you were still talking, kicking, but fact. that history was there for it to go no further. Definitely, than it definitely was. What it went, you know what I mean? You know what? I, you know, you know what? One thing I never told you. I never told you this. I saw your sister one day, and this we had already went through our, our issues, right? You told me at the laundromat. I saw. I was. I was. <laughs> my manager had lived on the same block as a laundromat, and she was. And I was like walking. I had parked my car, and I was walking by the laundromat. She was coming out or going into it. I can't remember. And she said, man, what's wrong with you, man? What's, like, what's wrong with you, man? Are you, like, what's, come on. Like, you better than, and, and then our history, and I, I looked at her and I was just like, I felt embarrassed. I was embarrassed because I was just like, damn, like, as a man, you know what I mean? I'm telling you that. Like, I, 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 for, like, Thais was like, she just gave me that, 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 that look like, Come on, man! Like, what's like, yeah. like? Come on, get you, like, you out here running around like, get yourself together, though. Like, so it it, it was something that I always thought about, it, and it was something that you know that always stuck with me. You know what I mean? But you know, a lot of times you don't you don't really understand the importance of living until you got an opportunity to live. No doubt. See, I was I was afforded the opportunity to live. You know, I was afforded the opportunity to start. You know, music started to work for me, and I started to become something that I never was before. So I got to see the world and I got to broaden my, 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 my viewpoints and my horizon. So then things that felt important to me before wasn't, no doubt. you know what I mean? So, and you know, and, and, and that's why I'm, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you, you, you sitting here and, and then you and Kim actually worked out your differences too, right? No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dope. Hell yeah. Shout Dope. out to Lord Kim, you know, yeah, shout out to Kim. And you know, you manifest that energy. You put that shit into the world, right? You know? I just grew up very old school. You know, I grew up around a lot of older guys. All my best friends was five, six years older. Indeed. And you know, that Brooklyn mentality is just that you you stand you stand for the hood. You stand for you stand for the turf and the borough. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to, I never wanted to beef with him from the gate. Mm-hmm. But as I grew older, I understood the mentality he was coming from mm-hmm. and what the game was at that time. It was a cease your moment type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like whatever it is, if, if a nigga feed into it, I'm going with it. You know what I mean? And Whatever comes from it, comes from it. So I understood his side, but then also, too, 
I did something I don't normally do. I wouldn't normally fed into that because Big Roll was never feeding into nothing. You know, Big mm. was having, he was beefing with Pac and all that. He never made no response records and none of these things. You know what I mean? So it was, but I had to learn that. I had to learn how to get my feet wet myself. You know what I mean? And those were just part things, but that helped me grow the same way it helped you grow. This mm. is just how we come up. But from the rip, I ain't never want that situation. I would just, you know, I was just all about my, you know, New York. I'm right, like, let right. alone, I don't want to, have drama with somebody that's actually from my hood. We live. That's right. We can walk to. We can walk to each other hoods mm-hmm. from where we come from. Mm-hmm. I always knew his brother. I knew Sino. Like mm-hmm. he's his dude. Like just people from that neighborhood and just from that side. So I always wanted to defeat that. But like, a part of me, here? a part of me, what? a part of me fed into it too. But it was needed for me to feed into it too because I needed that at the time. I needed that needed to that grow lesson. too. Yeah, I needed that lesson. You know, no I, I believe I, I mean? believe that things happen for whatever the reasons that they were supposed to happen, and then. You know, you either you either uh, learn from it, or you allow it to put pull you in a place that you know makes you worse. So I feel yeah. like we we all became better people. I feel like you and your, you and Kim relationship is good, is good now, and yeah. you know me and you cool. So it's just like we we got a chance to get past that, man. Yeah, me and you been cool. No, they, definitely we've been cool. They just seeing us now, right? Right. Like, you know and because we never we never we never we never we never really touched on it, and it's no it's no better place than to touch on it. No doubt. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen. No, no doubt. better place. And to touch it face to face too, and, and for the world yeah. to see too. Right. For the young, so the younger generation could see how to handle situations, like right. how we handle it. These younger generation don't know how to handle things. You know, they run and grab the knife or grab the gun first, or they just want to, you know, gang, gang, gang out. But if you get a chance to really fix something that you had with somebody that wasn't really a, a crazy situation, right, 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 right. Why not, not no real life and death. It better, yeah. It wasn't no life and death. You make you know it a win-win I mean? win situation. No doubt. Regardless. You know I mean, we both here right <laughs> now to to you know really do something special. That's huh? a fact. And I think for people to see us here right now, it's, it's, it's a good thing. You know what's okay. interesting? What's your relationship with Noriega? Be good. That's my brother. Good. Yeah, yeah. Nori because yeah. the that, whole Hot ninety seven. Yeah. Uh, uh, infamous shootout in front of Hot 97 yeah. between, well, Nori, Nori wasn't there, but Capone, Capone and his yeah. people and everything, yeah. right? So that, you and Nori good, right? Yeah, yeah, that's my brother. I was just speaking to him today, earlier. Nori called me 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and said, Mano, you should bring up people that you had issues with before. I said, no, what, what? <laughs> he said, "Would it be dope if you, if you brought up C's and y'all really talked about it?" I said, "Oh, really?" He started naming some other niggas, and I was just like, I, <laughs> "I don't know about all that." Is, but uh, <laughs> he definitely, yeah, 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 definitely. We was already working on yeah, that. It me, was already, yeah, right, 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 right. We good fun. for years, but yeah. We gonna have to work on the other things yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no doubt. Like you know, you know, it, it took me and him to get there too. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. just the history and all that. But you know, once you see somebody, man, you sit down, you talk to him, man, and you have a real genuine conversation with somebody, right. and you think about the bigger picture and what we really here for, mm. and what we really got at stake. You know, your right? Wife and that's and your the kids. hard part with today's world. They are too dr- ego driven and seeking attention that they don't want to have the conversation. Because yeah. the conversations are important. That's how you understand. What are you doing? What are you doing? Fixing my coat. <laughs> <laughs> but the conversations are important. The fact that you guys are even man enough to even have the conversation, sit down out. and sort out your differences. Like, look, I don't have no problem. I don't have no problem. So where do we go from here? Because like Maine said, he never thought we'll be, you know, it'll yep. come to this. So yeah. right. when you really get older and you realize that you're a blessing and you yes. made it this far. And that shit don't really some matter. Some kids already thinking they're going to die at 30 or That's die at 25. So That's their mentality true. is, I don't give a fuck whatever it is. And. You know, I don't give a fuck about me, so why would yeah. I give a fuck about you? So we you? trying to fix their mentality to go, yo, you could be growing and you could be living to, to be like this, man. Yep, Live absolutely. to be as old as you can be. Absolutely. That's a fact. I mean, some kids want to think it's cool to That's be 25 fact. and 30. Yeah, no, it's not. Live as old. old as you can be. I don't right. lie about my age. I'm happy to be in my 40s. Live. Yeah, I live to be 24. My best Word. friend ain't lived to see life and see the Barclays get built and see what Brooklyn is today. Right. Wow. My sister ain't get to live to see that. So you know wow. what I mean? I'm not afraid to say old I am, what I survived, what I've been through. Wow. That's why I could sit here with him, even wow. though we had differences. But look, mm-hmm. our shit wasn't that bad, bro, because we could sit right here, shake hands, and bug out and talk right. shit and still share history with some of our friends that's just touching the surface again after Absolutely. years. Mm. Absolutely. That's, 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 
that's 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 real, man. Experience the best teacher, right? You know what I mean? so it definitely is. Live I, as, I like what you said. Live as long as you can live, because that's the thing. Now, I grew up at a time when I I didn't think I was gonna live. You know, I didn't I didn't think about living long. You know what I mean? I was fifteen. When one of my close friends got killed. Me and Cena watched was there. You know, we we fifteen years old. We watched him take his last breath. Now, I didn't. I thought at some point that my life would be in that same type of mm-hmm. you know place because that's you coming from that environment where that's all you see and that's all around you. Um, and then the, you know, prison. You you kind of know that you're going to go to jail at some point because everybody around you going to jail. It kind of feels natural. But it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just profound that you said that. I like that though. Live as long as you can live because that's the thing. Like, you don't win an award just for being a being a young nigga. You don't like. There's no award for that. Like, you don't win an award just because you're young. Like niggas be like, oh, yeah, I'm a young nigga. I'm getting money. I'm a young nigga. Okay. All right. <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> Die, young nigga. Like I don't understand. Yeah. Like where you going? Like oh, you nigga, you know, these old niggas, the old niggas. That's okay, how they us now. They, right, they, you old niggas. Like I hope you live to be as old as I. Every am. old nigga was a young nigga going before. Right now was different. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I don't know if y'all get that, but it's, it's it should be a privilege to live to be a certain age. Right. So I, I act my age. I, I, you know, I inherit my age. I'm cool. I don't trip. I'm not out here trying to take two years and three years off my shit. Act. Take it or leave it. It is what it is. I survive. Y'all young niggas think it's old as 25. Y'all think mm. I'm old as 50. Because mm. all our greats, we lose at 50. Mm. Or before I'm that. I'm just happy yeah, to look younger that, than you know I am. Shit. Oh, man. You look I'll about 47, say, 8, or something like that. You look young as hell. Look, 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 I got it. My son about to be 17 in two weeks. See, sometimes you ain't got to ask nobody their age. <laughs> no. Some common sense that you think. <laughs> Like, okay, she got to put a 15 on that. Even if she had a young... Had a young <laughs> put at least a 15 on that. Put at least a 15 on that. You got to uh-uh. you know, sit there and go cut the, cut the mic off now. I mean, I right. like, How long was it? You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you do something different, you know what I mean? I tell but people all the time. Common sense, you know, mm-hmm. to your brain, man, uh, help you elevate in life. You yeah. ain't got... Nobody got to tell you that age just by the fact that That's you just got a 17-year-old. I got common sense. So I, <laughs> you put a 17 on that. 34? You know what I'm saying? Close. Like, okay. Close. You know, just that's just the way of life of trying to just think, you know, logically. You know what I'm saying? Dope, 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 dope. Wow. Um, you but grew you up kitchen talk. You, yeah, your <laughs> kitchen talk, right? But you know, you know, what was always interesting about about your story to me was that you grew up right up underneath Big. Yeah. Underneath I, that nigga too. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> One of the lines that I love from Big is this, though. Sees no all his hoes go to my door. <laughs> then it comes to his door to fuck some more. What? What that yeah. role? What that role was like, my nigga? Like, cause I know what the role was like for me, no, and I'm I'm bad. Like, I'm yeah, a yeah. bad guy. Like, I'm what that guy. role was like? The role was like, all right, PYP, play your position and and, and respect who the architect of the situation is. So I know if I walked in the room and B.I. is in there, I know firsthand any chicken here is probably going, it's Papa first. <laughs> I, I, I'm just here for the affair. You know, cool. <laughs> P.Y.P. Play my position. If anything yeah. come my way, I'm going to be stuck. <laughs> cool. B.I., you, you got something upstairs? Anything else? Is, it's free market. Good. But sometimes he might tap your line. Yo. Tell Shorty to come there. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't had nothing oh, yeah, some yeah, night. Yeah. Or everybody didn't work out. Whatever he had. Yeah, they work didn't out. work out. Like, no, I got to go home. Going, where Leo at? Yeah, he know he got phone. stuff. This before cell phones, too. So you had yeah. to yo, what, what, call the hotel room. Yeah. yeah, Yo, so with that thing you got down there? We good. She's sweet. You know what the sweet. It's been me. You good. Send it out. Come on, yeah. Let's go to the Papa room real quick. <laughs> <laughs> cool, we're going to go upstairs now. We're going to go to the suite. Oh, going, it's man. Up there. You got to think about it. Every time he, if you think about it, every time he shouted me out, it was always something with, with, with girls. Women. Yeah, with, with girls. Because that was our, that was just our thing. It wasn't grab the burner seeds or get on the block seeds. Everything was little seeds. Pass the law, please. Give honey the pillow. She ain't got the scuff her knees. Always, wow! Big was it was always yeah. Brooklyn. It 
It was, it, always, it was always fun time. So like, <laughs> kick it, I'm gonna smoke a bump with a little man. We, we gonna fuck some hoes. We gonna chill. That was always my relationship with him. He had a D Rock. He had a gutter. He had a money L. He had a Rube. You know, he had Mike. He had he had guys that that was really about the, the street work to do that. But right. These little guys are the guys. These ones, I'm trying to just get away from all that bullshit. But right. I know what they like to do. Just feed them some weed. Put some shorties around them. They good. You know what I'm saying? But he always tried to make sure, you know, we saw the elevation and getting away from the block. You know what I'm saying? So, and I was just one of the main copers with him that just kind of saw, you know, I had, you know, I had the common sense and I wanted to get off the streets. I wasn't with none of that. You know what I'm saying? He saw that. I was like, little nigga, this ain't you. I know you don't want to do that, so... He found a little position for me and just like kept me close through all that time. Oh, you know I mean? Big was good with the ladies, man. He was a smooth brother. Big was good with the ladies. Man. He was a smooth brother. <laughs> you know why? Because he was honest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand that. Honesty honest, is the man. best. He honest. taught me how to be that. Be honest. Nigga, you know. shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, <laughs> shut up. That but nigga honest. Yeah, he is. I, see, he I is. hung out with this nigga But you got to re- gotta respect that. You give people the chance. Look, this is what it is. You play it or you don't. Like, regardless of whether you play it, this, the show going to go on. Regardless. Yeah. So, yeah. But people don't understand that. These new niggas, they just different. Yeah, B.I. was very, he was very <laughs> But he had, he had a lot of ladies. I, I, I feel like I inherited all Big's women. Oh, God. <laughs> Yo, see, don't. Uh, don't. <laughs> no. See, <that> I <laughs> inherited Big. I feel like, I feel like I'm in the lineage. You it's understand? Funny. Like, I inherited his women, though. Like, that's a fact. That's that's a fact. You that's inherited you, you come when you, you come from that, you come from well, that. I inherited <laughs> all his women. Like, one of them had, <laughs> listen, one of them. Really? That's what we're going to do. Oh, All man. I'm going to say is this. That's what we're going to do. I quit. Right? Because <laughs> you got to think about that no, type of shit. No, no. Oh, see, listen. He's trying to figure out how he's going to formulate there was, his there words. Was, there was one that they say he really liked, and I was trying to understand, like, what was happening here, and then I inherited it <laughs> years later. Oh, shit. And, and I'm going to say that well, everything that I heard was true. It was so true that I couldn't believe it. I was picking up the kids from school, <laughs> dropping them off at school. All right? The, the, the daughters. Yeah. I was pick nigga. <laughs> I was saying to myself, what would Big do? What would? He couldn't drive, so he definitely wanted to pick them up. He but drive. he would at least, <laughs> maybe you would have drove. I would have drove. Yeah, I would have went. This is what I'm saying. Fact. Matter of fact, y'all was on that accident together. Yeah, yeah. You and that one. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Me, that was, yeah. That's that, a, that, let me just tell you this though. Between, like, it's not I, between you and him. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> so no, no I want to say this though. <laughs> that, that was some that was serious though. Like, yeah. I was like, I, I see what's happening. Like, yeah. I see why. See, uh, I mean, you think you could uh drop the kids? No, no problem, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Can I come back? Like, oh, wow. you got to fill me up. Yeah, yeah, like, you got to fill me up. Woo! Shout out to yeah, Philly. Shout, yeah, yeah, shout, yeah, shout out to Philly. Damn. Shout out to her. Shout out to Philly. Shout out to, shout out to all the ones that you know that be I you know. that I and shout out to all the ones that I inherited. Yeah, yeah. But back let me then. ask you a question. <laughs> See, <yo. laughs> I shot away the crown. Right no, I'm not trying to jam. <laughs> no, not oh, you. Talk about him. this motherfucker. I ain't talking about you. <laughs> so with with that, right? Like you say, shout out to the ones that he had. They all inherited. Knew, they all knew about each other, and they was okay with their position. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day. You know, B.I. was B.I. He mm-hmm. wasn't, he, he, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he was super foul. I can't, I, and I'm not going to speak on my man right now. Right. But he's not here to, I'm not going. He was who he was. He was doing what he was doing. Right. And everybody knew about it and everybody was cool with it. Let's okay. just put it that way. So young man. Doing his thing. Thing. Yeah, he was, he was young too. We was all kids, you know what I mean? Like, he ain't know no better, but he's very respectful. I mean, he made sure everybody was good. You know, all of them, I think all of them have a situation, you know, mm-hmm. to this day right now. Because of what he created, you know what okay. I'm saying? Because of being around his situation, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So at the end of the day, we only talk being about around his energy. Of what his energy was, you know what right. I mean? So, but see, it's a great thing, you know what I yeah. mean? No matter how you look at it, but and he died. 
People move on. Mm-hmm. Situations happen. Mm-hmm. But you know, Brooklyn niggas, Brooklyn niggas get around. So Brooklyn, listen, yeah, that's done. I don't know if you understand me though, bro. Like. I was getting up at 7.30 in the morning <laughs> to drop them kids off, bro. You had you said alarm? Huh? You had the alarm set and everything? <laughs> I I was getting pushed like, hey, could you? You wasn't getting pushed. To, you was doing it well. Rolling like, over. Like, I, I was, was that jumping good. up. It you was, basically saying it, it was, was that good. I, it was immaculate? I mean, you got the kids. Mm, you, mm, <laughs> I can't. Uh, leave me. Call me Bennett. And you ain't, I in, ain't it? in it. <laughs> you heard though. You heard. I know you heard because I heard. <clears throat> you heard, yeah, and you needed to I'll, see for yourself. I'll, you, yeah. <laughs> I was taking it out. I just go by actions. Mm, mm, mm. When my man put some attention into something, it's it's for a reason. How did you get there though? To the kids. How did you even get into <laughs> that, that situation? Yo, you see, come to on, the kids. I'm not in the seat. Yo, woo. Listen, a man going to do what he wants to do. You understand? And, and if you give me, like, if you allow inspiration me to. to do it, like, the way the shit you doing in here, I, I'll fuck around and do anything. What you need me to do? What you need me to do? Like, literally, like, what do you need me to do? Man is a man. The neighbor, the neighbor make too much noise? I'm going, across, I'm going, I'm going next door. <laughs> I'm going to say something. I'm going to handle that. Which 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 apartment is it? One D or one B? How you want me to handle it? Oh okay, that oh duck rope. Okay, no problem. When a nigga like that, I would have did any. I would have did anything. You was in love. Love. That was love. I don't know if it was love, but it was. It was something. It was. It was, it was, it was, it was entrapment. <laughs> it was wicked. It was an entanglement. It was wicked, man. Yeah, it, it, it was something. Ooh. But, but let me tell you something. Shout, shout out to that peacock, yeah, man. Shout out to every. See, I'm not gonna say that, but shout out to all of them that was insinuated with that. I, I love y'all. I fucks with y'all. And they, but they love me too, I, though. Yeah. See, I'm, that's what I'm I saying. I'm why, inherited it's a, though. It's a Brooklyn. I had dog. the crown. I wore the crown. Brooklyn, like, Brooklyn, it's a I mean, Brooklyn thing, bro. It's, yeah, it's where you come from. yeah, it's, like it's only right. It's only right that I dreamt it. See, I dreamt of this shit, bro. I was in my, I was in my cell, and it was a, it was a dream of mine to be outside, around. That, that 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 early bad boy, you know, uh, uh, B.I.G. era. You understand? I'm seeing them coming to see me, and I want I wanted to be out there so bad. I wanted to be a part of that. And then by the time I get out, and then you know, I was in. I I, I inherited. Yeah, no doubt. I inherited, bro. So. Nah, that's love. And, and that is you love. Came from too, man. You know, you got a story to tell. Yes. Bro, you know? Yes. You came from you came from a place to where you probably thought you wouldn't get to you wouldn't get to this stage of where you are. No, I didn't think and that's one reason why I fucks with you and I respect you for that because from the first time I met you when you came home, mm-hmm. you met on my block. That's right. And I could just tell by your energy, you were just really like, yo, I'm really serious about this rap shit. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't really take that that situation serious or that opportunity. So, you know, you from, from that very first beginning, I knew you was James, dead. man. I knew you. I, I want say him James. to say it. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> you got to understand, all of the listeners, <laughs> we, we have different nah, no listeners. Doubt, yeah. They're not all older. Some of them are young. Well, I think that was the first time, right? When I think I came on the That's block. Right. I think I was That's right. That's right. Yeah, I pulled up in the burgundy. This when you just, yeah, yeah. you just came yeah, home. had a burgundy but escalate. Your energy was very, yeah. what's up? Let's get this, like, I want to do the song. Let's go. Y'all ready to do this shit. I always remember that day, and I always see where you at today. I'm like, yo, nah. He was always dead serious about the music, you know, and that's what spoke. That's what spoke for itself. Man, you, you know, know what I mean, you know, because that when you when you after being incarcerated for so long, you have a you have this energy that you could take on the world because you just sat incarcerated for so long that you can actually you feel like you can do anything, right? Yeah. So it was a time when I was in a jail and they they put me in a mess hall and then I hated it. I had to get up 4.35 in the morning, every morning to go work in the mess hall. But I hated it, but it was a part of the journey. So when I got home, I always remembered those lessons. Like, you know, I used to have to get up and go, you know, no matter what I was doing the night before, I had to go always pick up my son, get him washed up, and take him to take him, drop him off at daycare. Yeah. So I would say, like, because people ask me, like, damn, like, you just went in the house at 5.30. You getting right back up in an hour? And I'd be like, listen, if I could get up for them crackers... 
No, to I, go well, do, yeah, to go slave in the mess hall when I don't want to be there. You got niggas coming online, someone they want the big piece of cake. I'm arguing with niggas in the yard. Put the little bit shit up. Talking like, about they want the big piece of cake, and I'm like, bro, you don't see this man standing behind me. You better take that cake. <laughs> what you want to do? And then I got to go in the yard and and deal with niggas behind that. All right, like I, missing the spoons. And like, if I can get up and do that, then I can get up for my son. And with my freedom, though. With yeah, my freedom. Being, being on the outside. I could do anything. So that's that energy right there, man. Yeah, man. I always wanted to tell you that, you know. I, I respected you for doing that, for following through just with that. You know nah, what I mean? Even having you, the man. bumps in the road that think mm -hmm. your shit can't be. You kept going with that until you scored you that record that mm -hmm. changed your situation. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. You ain't looked back since, man. So, you know, respect to you for that. You know? Nah, thank you, brother. I know for where you come from, you know, just to make it to that far. you, you Just know, that alone. We didn't already over... over we, Overachieved because no he wasn't supposed to even get that get far, that far. No doubt, you know. Man. But we, but 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 the history is still being written, you know what I mean. And we still got so much more to do, Thanks. you know what I mean. So I like to say that every day we wake up, we there's another opportunity for us to step in our greatness, you know yeah. what I mean. So every day I still got another shot, That's you right. know what I mean, at 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 being great, stepping into my greatness and. And, and motivating and inspiring people and in reaching my goals at the same time. So we just still getting started. We still very early in the game and we still very early in life. You know what I mean? But don't um, play with your time too, people. You know, if you're out there, man, you got time on your hands, don't play with it, man. You can't get time back. It's the greatest currency. Every day you wake up, you're a day closer to death. It might sound rude, it might sound crazy, but any opportunity you get, take advantage of it. Because every day you wake up, you don't you time don't go back. Time only move forward. So Heavy you have dropping. to take advantage of every moment you have. So Heavy, every day I wake up, I try to make a difference in no matter what it is. Heavy Jew dropping. If it's health, you know what I'm saying? if it's just trying to progress, if it's just trying to get some knowledge, just to speak to somebody. Every day you wake up, you're a day closer to death, man. So use wow. every time you have very wisely. Wow. Because time Dude. do not rewind itself. Time only move forward. We can get jobs back. We can get cars back. We can mm. get... The jewelry back that was stolen, you know, any any of that back. But you can't get that wasted time back. So mm. you make sure whatever time that you have, you make sure you put it in oh. the right situations, the Absolutely. right things. Speaking of time, I heard you. I want to ask you a question. I heard you tell it many, many times. And the reason why I want to ask you this because it's pieces of the story that I just need to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a movie, All Eyes on Me, and I was asked to play one of the people that shot and robbed Pop. And in the movie, if anybody's seen the movie, All Eyes on Me, the Tupac movie, I'm the person that shoots Tupac at the, the infamous Quad Studios thing, right? I did him pretty dirty in the movie. <laughs> I, I did him pretty dirty. I would talk crazy to him, like, you think this is a rap video, nigga? You think this is a rap video? Proud of yourself. <laughs> you got excited. I did so much of a good job that people really was mad at me. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Like, dudes really was mad thing. at me. Like, yo, you really shot like, pop, the, bro. I'm really just acting, bro. Right. Like, it's just like a this movie. is a movie, like, bro. <laughs> and he ain't died off that one. When people yeah. are mad at your character, that means you did a yeah. great job. Yeah. yeah. Um, from Here's the story from what I know, right? Pac is coming to the studio to meet Lil Sean, mm -hmm. right? Y'all in Quad, in the building of Quad, it's a lot of different floors with studios floors, in, yeah. in it, right? Um, you in one of the studios with Big yeah, in the Mafia. Know, I think we was on the, we was on the eighth floor. Y'all was on the eighth floor. Yeah. Reception desk is on the sixth floor. Okay. I don't think it's there no more, is it? That reception probably, no, that's probably it's not, definitely. Yeah. It's not the animal. But that's where the reception floor was. And, right, back then. At that time, yeah. Um, you see him from the window, mm -hmm. from that from that little uh, balcony yeah, thing up there. Balcony. And you, you scream out to him, yo, Pac, what up? He see you. Yo, C's, what up? He goes in. And then what happened from there? This I is went, a very important. I need you to speak right here. I went and told Big from there, like, yo, you know, yo, Pac downstairs. Right. Big like, you lying. I'm like, nah, I'm dead serious. Pac downstairs. He's like, all right, well, go get him. Y'all didn't know he was coming. We didn't know he was coming. See, that's the first thing. So we didn't know he was coming in to see little Sean or anybody. We didn't know that. That was our first junior mafia session we ever had. We we were calling players anthem in there. So this is the first time y'all in there as a group. As a group. Is yeah. Kim there? 
Yep. Yeah, all of Him us there. Everybody Clark Kent did. that produced the record. Clark, Clark Kent was there. there. We all in the lab. Moss, Banger is there. Yeah, Banger, Trife, the whole mafia, Nino. Nino. We all okay. in there. And just so happened, me and Nino went to the, uh, no, we went to the terrace. And we were just talk regular shit. Like, just got away from everybody. And we're just like, yo. Like, just like bugging off for that. We got a deal now. Like, yo, right. you can't believe it. Like, yo, we got a record deal. Bro. Like, now, we cut our own check. We got our own bread now. And next thing you know, I see a bunch of people walking downstairs and We've been hanging out with Pac for like the last month, two months, while he was right. going above the rim. I know the walk. I see the bandana. Right. What's the first thing I do? You see somebody you fuck with. Yo, I'm a kid. I'm 15 right. years old. Yo, what's up, bro? He looking up. Who that? Who that? The C's. C's, what's up, little nigga? What up, little nigga? Yo, come around the corner. I'm going to come downstairs and get you. Not knowing he was already coming there. So I run in the room. Uh, big Pac downstairs. Hold on. So you thinking that he just pulling up to see y'all? I'm or? thinking he just random, just spurting through the city. And, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what happened in Manhattan at that time. Right. Running around, you know. I didn't think he was coming there. I didn't know he was coming there already. You know what I mean? We ain't supposed to have been there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm like, you see somebody you fuck with. That's right. All right. I'm acknowledging them. Why should I not? Yes, indeed. Yo, I go in the room and I tell Big, yo, Big, Pac is downstairs. Big like, I right, go get him. That's when I go downstairs. And the crazy part is Nino came with me. Right. Nino heard the shots in the elevator before we even got downstairs. You didn't hear him? Nah, I was just thinking about the weed, though. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even, like, I'm just like, man, that nigga, I know he got that. But Nino, like, you ain't hear that shit? I'm like, nah, I don't hear shit. So when we get downstairs, the elevator door opened, and God bless the dead, stretch from Live Squad. Right. He was real tall. So it opens like, on the... On the on the on the first floor. On the first floor. You know how narrow, you know, that yes. shit is like real short from the right, wall. Right. Stretch is like six feet, six right. two, six five. So when the door opened, he was kicking his feet back off the door. He on the a, floor though. You couldn't floor. see the two couldn't see the two two robbers that was on both sides. Right. So I'm just like thinking they drunk and just bugging out. And I walk out. The next thing you know, dude from the dude with the fatigue shit, just like, yo, get the fuck back in the elevator. Step right back in the elevator. Scared to death out of my mind. Did you see Pac? years old. Nah, Pac was already shot and upstairs. Remember? Oh, he went to so the that's other what Nino elevator. heard. That's what Nino heard when, when we got on the elevator. He was like, yo, I heard some shots. But remember, Pac, the only one that kind of crawled, got in the elevator and crawled upstairs. That's where he saw Andre Harrell. He saw everybody oh. upstairs. So when I got downstairs, that already happened. So the other niggas were still downstairs that, you know. Right. Niggas were still. So basically, you coming down, he going up. He going up, yeah. So I never saw him downstairs. Right. So when you went back up, I went back upstairs after we the niggas told us to get back in the elevator. I'm so paranoid. I'm hitting door open. So the door went closed for like two minutes. <laughs> like, wow. Dude, like this with the but he's seeing it like there's a part in the movie that, that the guy like plays you Spe when special shout out <laughs> shout out special. Shout out special. Get the <laughs> fuck back in the elevator before I make change out your ass. Yeah. And that, you know, I mean, movie, but that wasn't, but they were just, it was, you know, this is some real situation going on. It was, a, well, I think once they saw it was some little young kids, like, oh, it's some young kids, get the fuck back in the elevator. It was that type of thing. That's how I took it. Uh-huh. When the elevator door finally closed on his own, because I was pushing the door open, I looked at Nino, we got upstairs, I went so big, I said, you're big, but y'all getting thrown down right now. You said pop, you mean? Yeah, I mean pop. Yo, Pac downstairs is getting thrown down right now. Big so, one, stop playing with me. So, just to slow you down, because I'm just for clarity, mm -hmm. Pac is not on y'all floor. He didn't. He, he the elevator didn't take him to y'all. It floor. took him to the sixth floor. The reception to the, to the floor. Sixth is. floor. You went back to the eighth floor. To our floor where we was at. Now on the sixth floor was who? Andre Harrell. May rest in peace. Shout out to Andre. Yeah, yeah. Um, RP. But we didn't even know. Understand? We didn't know they was there. You gotta understand? Right. We didn't know. None of this was going, none of them was downstairs. We don't know. We went to our floor and we was upstairs. So we didn't know, excuse me, we didn't know Puff just came in there. Puff was just shooting the warning video with him driving down oh. Times Square with the phone Puff and the drop top. He just came there to check on Big Session to come with us. But he to find out where we at, you had to go to the sixth floor. Oh. So when Pop got shot and went upstairs, that's where he saw everybody upstairs at. Like, yo, I... I can't tell you if that's true because I wasn't on that floor. So I don't know who was up there. When he said he saw Andre, he saw Puff, he saw Sean. We never saw none of those. We was on the eighth floor. So we that's where we came from. 
You know what I mean? So I never knew all of them was up there. And Puff was like, yo, I was on my way coming up there to see where y'all room was. You had to go to the sixth floor to go, yo, where the Junior Mafia session at? Oh, I was on the eighth floor. Elevator go two flights up. And when all that happened, that's where Pac got on the elevator and saw all of them up there on the sixth floor. Wow. You know what I mean? So a so, lot of people don't know that, but we right. didn't know that they was there. And we was on our floor. So y'all never actually got a chance to see him in Not until building. he came downstairs. Because everybody that they... They was bringing out the building. Of course, after he got shot, you know, you couldn't leave the building. You couldn't go nowhere. Everybody that came downstairs, they took your information, put you up on the side of the wall until you couldn't leave until they knew what was going on. So the last time I saw him was when they welded him down in the, uh, the stretcher. In the stretcher. Right. That's the last time we saw him. And, you know, of course, after that, he went to court. And he got found guilty for the rape thing and went to jail. So we never got a chance to even but see him after that. Let me ask you... Did Big try to go see him in the in the hospital and, and couldn't get in or something like that? Yeah, 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 definitely. They that wouldn't happened. let yeah, they wouldn't let Big up there. But Big went and took him. Big went and took him his uh his uh his ratchet that he had. Cause once he got upstairs, he put his ratchet in the piano. So Big went back to Quad the next day and got it and took it back to the hospital for him, but they wouldn't let Big go up there. Did he know that Big tried to come see him? I don't know. Because That's I feel like if I he don't know. if he knew that, then Maybe maybe the situation would have been different, like if that meeting would have took place, right? Of so course. say like all these all these events happen, right? Pac is in the hospital, and that one little detail could have changed. If, yeah, could have changed no a lot doubt. of things. I think about this often. When Big went to the hospital, what hospital was Pac in? You remember? Oh, uh, I don't remember. No. Was it, but it was in New York City. It was in New York. Yeah, it was in the city. It was definitely in the city. If head. Big would have gotten to see Pac at the hospital and they would have gotten to be able to look each other's in the eyes, talk about whatever they needed to talk about. Pac would have, would have been able to, to feel the support coming no from, from Big. Things could have been a lot different. I never even thought about it like that. I never even thought about if he knew Big was there or not. You know, I don't know that part. I mean, so it's like, it's a lot of things that people don't be understanding with us that we don't know. You know, we was young. It's still a mystery to us. But, you know, at the end of the day, I always try to just protect my, you know, protect my boy integrity. Like, Big would never, like, you know, that just wasn't our style. And Big had a promising career. Why would he want to, you know, that just wasn't his thing. Why, Like, he wouldn't do that. First of all, if we was on that type of time, why would I even let you know that I'm in the facility? Mm. Right. Meanwhile, I would just rob you ourself if I was just going to do that right. at that point, right? right. Why would right. I? That's like taunting you. Right. Yeah, nigga, I'm up here. Come around the corner. I should have just robbed you myself. But I came downstairs. But for a long time, Pac didn't know I came downstairs because he never saw when I came. Down. Oh, because he was already upstairs. He was already, he was already upstairs, on. so he didn't know we even came downstairs. So, from Pac's point of view, is this right? This is two Pac's point of view. He gets to the corner of 48th and, was that 7th? Yeah, 7th, yeah. He sees you out the window. Yo, 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 what up, C's? He walks in the building and niggas rob him. Mm-hmm. He, goes up to, he goes up to the 6th floor and it's Puff. Andre. Andre. All, all Biggs people. Right. He don't, he don't know that you... Actually came down on the elevator to like yeah I, to and meet I, him and I got back down too yeah he right don't he, don't know know, that, he don't know he don't know all that oh yeah they back they back little man down too told me to get back in there he don't know none of that and then he's in the hospital he don't know or may not have known at the time that Big actually went to the hospital and tried to visit him no doubt so he's confused he's shot he facing the rape case he's on trial. Yeah, all these things, yeah. It's a lot, against the world. It's, a lot, it's a lot going on. No doubt. It's a lot going on in his mind, and he young. Yeah. It's a lot going on in his mind at the time that probably contributed to a lot of those feelings that I he was having. I, I agree. I, I, I definitely believe in that. Because we was kids. You know, when you look at it now, the age we right, at now, right, 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 we right. look back and we're talking about them at, in their 20s. Early 20s. 20s. Oh, yeah, 23, 24, 25, like they... They're kids. I'm 43 years old right now. So I look back at that and go, damn, they was wild young, dog. Right. Like, so, you know, we still, you still wet behind the ears, man. You still, you, you still a puppy compared to how we live now and what we do now. You know what right, I mean? Right, so right, right. Maybe he didn't know that. 
You know what I mean? But my thing was, you know, after all that happened, Stretch, you know, God bless the dead, Stretch is the one that told me that. Because he went to see, um, he went to see Tupac on Rackers Island. After Stretch, all this. After all this. Yeah, because Stretch was still cool with us. Stretch, I mean, after right. all that. Because Stretch knew what it yeah, Right, he, and Big he, always spoke highly of Stretch. Yeah, he knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? So Stretch was like, when, when he went to see Pac, he told Pac, was like, yo, that shit was funny. How when Season them came downstairs and they back Season them down, he said, Pac was like, like season them came down. He was like, yeah, they backed them down too. Cause he didn't remember. He didn't know. But then from there it went to the, well, who's the, who shot your records was about. You know what I mean? It was mm. like, it was always like, it was something else. But it was, somebody the, it was in the 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 fire just to, to try to keep push the, the, push the, push the envelope. I'm but it, it was the vibe article first. Yeah. That was the first thing he did. He did an interview while he was in, the, cause he blew trial. And while he was in on, on Rackers Island, he did the vibe, the vibe interview where he basically implicated y'all in his mm-hmm. situation. Now, when I'm asking you now, Stretch being a more a more of a person that understood it from both angles, he wasn't able to reach him and tell him like basically like nah, they didn't they didn't do that. I mean, from what Stretch was telling us, he did do that. But you know, I mean, you know, yo, I met Pac a few. You know, I was around Pac a few times. Pac is a real, he's a real definition of a Gemini to me. Uh. Well, they say Gemini's are like night and day. You know, mm-hmm. Cody, your friend, she's a Gemini. The way they could very just be night and day, contradicting, but in the real way. Because gangsters ain't tough twenty four seven all day. Every That's day. Right. A real gangster got a heart. That's right. Ooh, a real gangster got manners. Got feelings. He gonna take care of his kid. That's right. He gonna love his mom. So Tupac was all that. So I always took a a, a liking to him because it was that. He was. Just, I'm just like, yo, he's the real rapper to me because he could. However, do you want it? Then you know, fuck with the hoes. Then he could be like, right. yeah, keep your head up, ladies. And then he could write a letter to his moms. Right. I always felt like that was a real inspiration of a rapper to me. He was very contradicting as being real with yourself because we right. don't feel. We don't feel the same way we feel 24-7, 365. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a real motherfucker, you got you just have feelings and emotions in you. The way I feel this way, and I might feel bad about that, and I might wake up and apologize to you about it. That's how Pac was, because I had those situations and conversations with him as a kid. I was 13, 14, going up there to, to, to the hotel, hanging out, smoking bud with him when I was a kid. So I understood certain things and certain actions that he did. And I just felt like, you know, once his mind was made up on certain things... It was the wrong people at that time that were just feeding him the wrong shit. And I think he really knew what really was. Like, you really knew what it was, bro. You know we didn't have nothing to do with that. I just felt like he used Big as a scapegoat for that Pacific situation. Because what, what was his agenda, though? What was his goal, though? What I, we, what do you think he was gaining by doing that? I mean, some people gain notoriety. You know, when you got when you, when you you got somebody like uh, Suge at that time that was really in his ear... You know, mm-hmm. Death Row at that time kind of was, it was music, but also L.A. dudes, they used to beefing and making songs and clowning niggas and all that. So they been through that cycle with Eazy-E. They right. went through that cycle with Luke. Right. So when the bad boy shit came around and Pac is involved it's and they a great Pac, opportunity to do that. Great opportunity to start some more shit. Right. But everybody wasn't with that. You know what I mean? Snoop wasn't with that. Mm-hmm. Right. Pound Snoop wasn't always, with that. Those Snoop my, always is. Yeah, that's my family to this day. You know what I mean? But... The media kind of too blew it up too. You know what I mean? Because Pac wasn't always in that feeling. You listen to some Pac interviews. He was right. like, yo, don't blame me and Big for this when y'all blasting this off tech. So he always right. wasn't negative. You know what I mean? And there was right. times that where he spoke greatly of Big to where you felt like it was a chance of them fixing it. It just so happened that they just never got a they chance. They never to got it. a chance to speak. They never got a chance to do it. They died six months apart. Both Gemini's. But y'all seen them in LA. Yeah. At the at the what's that Soul Train at the Soul Train Awards. I heard my man D Rod held it down. Yeah. Gutter, Shout out to Gutter. Gutter, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Gutter. Gutter took that piece off. Gutter took that piece off security hip because they wasn't gonna try. <laughs> Listen, we had to get out that lot. What what what, what happened? Well, the whole time uh, we didn't know they was there, and um, we went there and we had a show in a uh, what's that A and T? What's that college in Greensboro? I think that same day. Mm-hmm. So we had a flight already leaving. So uh, when Big won that award, you know, of course, you know, we got booed and, you know, they really wasn't fucking with us out there and shit. So, you know, we ain't even sitting in seats after that, you know. B.I. like, yo, we got an award. 
Pop's like, let's go do some press. Big like press. I'm about to press the button on this the whips back there so we get the fuck up out of here. Right. Like, we out. We, we not gone. home. Like, he like, yo, nah, B, I, you got to do this press and all that. So we like, cool. So we do the press and everything. And uh, when we get to the back, you know, where all the cars be circling around, you know, everybody coming around. And we were sitting there waiting for our cars to pull up and the Hummer pulled up. And it was Suge and Pac. And Pac was out the window. What? Yo, thug life. And, you know, he cursing us out. I had a tanky on. I was drunk as shit. <laughs> pants down to here. You know, I'm cursing back. Fuck you niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck y'all. B.I. got me like this. Like, you know, like, little niggas stay right here. You know, but it's a, and Suge was just like, you know, but he like, yo, I'm trying to talk to him, trying to talk to him. But of course, all the security, the Muslim, the people got Hold it. on. Did they, they stopped. They pulled up. Yeah, they yeah. got out. Look, while we waiting for our, we thinking our limo supposed to pull up. Right, they, they pulled, pulled up. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they out the, they out the window. It was just four of them too. It's like Suge pocket like two other niggas. He's like, yeah, we, we gonna get this shit over with now. Like, shit crazy. It's, it's broad daylight too. It's like three, four o'clock in the afternoon. We like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> right. So you know, shit getting close. So you know, gonna looking like nobody gonna do nothing. Grabbed that old security and it had to stop all that. Like, yo. What? And that's when, oh shit, your man got a strap. Who said that? Sure. Sure was like, oh. Oh, y'all got straps. <laughs> oh shit, okay. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> y'all got One straps. One time for the motherfucking strap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, y'all got straps out here. So shit got, you know, but that was it. You know, he, he makes sure he backed big up, put us in the car. We got in that car. Pac, we got what what was Pac saying when he was out the car? He was just he was a lot yelling, of cursing. Yeah, a lot of cursing. <laughs> a lot of, like, yeah, like y'all niggas, you. you on the west side. Yeah, shit's about to go down. It was, it was that. He was just and Bi ain't say a word. And I put that on Bi. Bi was just sitting there looking like, like looking at him like, man, like you dead like, ass. Where we get to like where we get to this at? You know, what I mean, Big ain't say a word. Ain't say nothing. He was just holding me by the by my tank. Like, yeah, he was just, you know, I was you, the one saying you was I, talking crazy. I was drunk and cool. I was seen, you know, I'm just I'm young, dog. I ain't you know, I ain't thinking nothing of it. You know what I mean? This is just part of what it is. And at the end of the day, this this my dog right here. It's my big brother. It's my dad. You know, B I was like my pops at that time. So we already out there. So it's like, you know, I ain't think nothing could get no worse than this where I come from. <laughs> Shit, man, I've been through worse shit than somebody yelling at me type yeah. of thing. You know what I mean? Especially when I'm around, you know, gutters and Gutter, rocks. Yeah, and, you know, definitely. that's what happened. And we got in the car, and, you know, the traffic was, like, kind of still. You know what I mean? So it's like, while we sitting in that limo, you still on pause. It was like wild motherfuckers with red shirts walking past the limo, throwing the death row emblem on the window and shit. What? And B.I. was like, yo, telling the driver, yo, rolling down that partition, just get out this lot. <laughs> Just you know, get out this yo, lot. Yo, yeah, you know, you don't know the driver. You yo, bruh. Just get out this lot. Stop stopping. Get out the lot. It was mad motherfuckers coming through tapping their chains on the window. Death row shit. Whoa. So now we realize, god damn, this whole fucking lot, nigga. This shit straight to the airport. Straight <laughs> to the motherfucking airport. Facts. We went straight to the airport. And while we was on the airport, Pac was on the radio. Yeah, I ran them cowards out of town. Word. Yeah, he was talking, cursing us out on the radio. Like, and we went and wow. got on the flight and went to AC and performed at A&T College like a few wow. hours later. Like, went right there, did another show the next night. But that was the shit that we used to, you know, it was really thick. And just before, ain't no phones to, to capture this shit. Ain't no social media. Ain't no videographer with you. Entourage changed, man. Like, yeah, nah, you had to have your homies out there with you all you day, have, every day. What was yeah. that talk like in the car, though? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> what was that talk like? Like, it probably was quiet. Like, 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 damn, this it was this. Pop it was is up. crazy, though. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, woo, Yo, they had to go to jail. <laughs> be good because it could have went. Yo, you in a whole another side of town, bro. You know we. We don't know what could be right. there. Right. But not, you know what I mean? On the way to the airport, what would what did Big feel like? How did he like cuz this is the first time he's seen Pop in person since he's been saying what he's been saying. Records had been coming out. Hit him up had already been out and this is the first time he's seen like yeah. after y'all got into that little standoff, what was where where was he was at? Hurt, man. Yeah, I was hurt from that shit, dog. Was hurt from that. It's like you no matter where your man from, y'all got a relationship and y'all cool and you feel like, damn, bro, you really going this hard? Even if it was a misunderstanding, like, yo, why you going this far with it? Like, you know, 
excuse me, shit could really turn left, bro. Like, you're not thinking about that? And Big was hurt behind that because Big really, Big fuck with dude. You know what I mean? That was Big fun for real, for real. B.I. didn't do nothing crazy, nothing grimy, nothing shysty. But B.I. looking like, damn, you're not even letting this shit go, bro. Like, you still going on with I didn't respond to your record. Man, you still come, like, what do I supposed to, you know, B.I. just didn't know, what, he didn't know what to do. But B.I. was doing him because everybody else wanted to do something totally different. Mm-hmm. B.I. had to control a lot of guys that was from the neighborhood to chill out. Like, don't, 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 please, don't, 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 don't. It's my career. That's what I'm trying to do. That's not what I'm about. Do not do that. And a lot of people didn't. A lot of people took Big word for it because that's who Big was. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't want to go that route. It wasn't about him being a sucker. He's just like, yo, I got I got a big opportunity. I got a bigger situation at the end of the day. If I didn't do that, I'm going to stand tall on that. Me keep on rapping about it or going back and forth with it or just make it more than what it is. At the end of the day, if I know my truth, I know my truth, and I'm going to stand on that. Yep. And that was B.I., that was kind of like his mentality. Kim wanted to make a record. Mm. <laughs> Out of all the people, Kim was like, nigga, I got a verse already. <laughs> Dead ass, my nigga. Out of, all the, out of all the motherfuckers, man, but Kim was like, yo. I'm, it was I'm a version a of Big Mama thing, though. With that third she, verse. She was, third yeah, verse, she yeah. threw some shots. She, she said she popped to keep his punk ass head up or something like that. Yeah. yeah. She was but, throwing shots at Fizzy, too. She was throwing shots at Faith on that record, too. Oh, wow. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, it's been a hell of a year. Personally, I feel like I've aged 12 years over the last 12 months. And if you're like me, you're feeling your age more than you used to, especially in the bedroom. It's time to snap out of it. Spring is here, and it's time to get sprung with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and is at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting online at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with our licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem here. Blue Chew's tablets are chewable. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Kitchen Talk. Check out, just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code Kitchen Talk to receive your first month free. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Mm. <laughs> Out of all the people, Kim was like, nigga, I got a verse already. <laughs> Dead ass, my nigga. Out of, all the, out of all the motherfuckers, man, but Kim was like, yo. I'm, it was I'm a version of Big Mama thing, though. With that third she, verse. She was, third yeah, verse, she yeah. threw some shots. She said she popped to keep his punk ass head up or something like that. Yeah. yeah. She was but, throwing shots at Fizzy, too. She was throwing shots at Faith on that record, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Question, though. <laughs> Question. I mean, it was a record. This is what was going on back uh-huh. then. Shit was, it was spicy. Shit was, it was spicy. A lot, lot happening. Shit was uh, curry. <laughs> 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 it was more jerkish. Like, you know what I mean? Shit. <laughs> Nowadays, years later, everybody holds big as being the greatest of all time. But at the time, it was a, while he was here, I don't know if people realize it, he took a lot of hate. There's a lot of artists that was throwing some shots. Definitely. All right? <laughs> I never heard you talk about what it was like when you had Wu-Tang, Boot Camp Click, mm-hmm. original. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. That put that hands did. on them niggas, didn't you? <laughs> I, y'all yeah. put hands on them boot clap niggas. Nah, that's it, yo. <laughs> no, y'all put hands on, 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 on the original gun clap. 
What the fuck? Hold on. You all right over there? I got water. This nigga, my eyes water too. Yo, shut up. It was a lot of New York artists at the time that threw shots at Big. Yeah. How did y'all feel about that? Especially in the city. Big was hurt behind that shit, man. He he ain't like that shit. You know what I mean? Because he felt like he wasn't doing nothing to do that. He didn't put it. He didn't give himself that status. That's what the the source did that. The source of that photo shoot, they gave him that title. Like, Yo, bro, you the king of New York. B, B, I ain't never say that. Like he said, the black Frank White hit us. That's what he said. That's yeah, what he the said. black Frank White, and you know every rapper would talk right. that talk. Like ain't nothing wrong. You, I can't get mad at you for saying you number one. You should say that. What rapper you know gonna be like? Yo, yeah, I'm number two, number three. <laughs> no, cool. Like no. When you say you KOB, how can I be mad at that? That's right. how you feel, and that's the energy you want to present to the world, and you feel like you're doing that, right. and that's your thing. Why would I be mad at how you feel? Right. And if it's helping you progress and to make you do things, like how do I, what am I supposed to tell you? Nah, you can't say that because he's that. Nah, nah, if you feel that way, because we, we all be kings, so you know you can't look at it that way, but the source made big that, and some people, yeah, they, they took a disliking to that. I always remember this video. The original Gun Clappers, right? Yeah. OGC. Mm-hmm. They had a a video where they had like a person playing big. Yeah, a person dressed playing up like Kim, Junior Mafia. Junior Mafia, Mafia yeah. And they had pulled y'all off the stage. Club, kicking us off the stage, pulled the wig off. and Be honest with me. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to be honest with I me. I will, because that's my, those are my niggas to this day. Yeah, so I will. No, we're not talking about tech and steel. Yeah, of course. I'm talking about in general, but all of them, like, be clear. All right? Anybody got, got their jaw broke? I don't know if nobody got their jaw broke, but it was... Somebody got their jaw tapped. Yeah. One time for the... Altercation. Come on, come on. <laughs> It was a, it was an altercation. Listen, it was an altercation with that. We're not going to... No, go listen. No, 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 <laughs> listen, listen. Listen. Big would not respond on record, but it was a lot of business getting handled off record, right? Yeah. <laughs> one time, one time. <laughs> a lot of business getting handled. Oh, one time for the business, man. Let me ask you. Ain't that like... That's how that's, it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed you know, to be. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about, at, especially when you know you ain't done nothing, you ain't do nothing wrong. Big didn't do nothing wrong in that situation. That's why we could talk about it now, because they talked about it. You know what I mean? Like, the, this, the, the person that occurred with talked about it on the interview before he explained what it was. What well, he said? He got his ass whipped? He said how it whole, he said how it happened. Come on, he said, all right. He said he was in the studio and some niggas came up in that studio. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing Junior Mafia shirts. <laughs> yeah, they did. And they were big shit in. Woo! And called B.I. right there. B.I. was like, yo, what's up? Like, you going, like, can we talk? Are you going... And at that time, that person wasn't trying to talk, right? Like, B.I. wanted it, like, yo, my nigga, we jumped out the window. My bad, my nigga. But the, I heard the nigga was on the phone like, what up? And B.I. like, put my man back on the phone. Mm. B.I. said, yo, man, y'all do what y'all do. I ain't like how that sounded. And mm. I, was in, I was in the lab with B.I. Right. When all this was going on. So I'm in the studio with B.I. I just click and... No, niggas come back like nothing ever happened. Get back in there. Yo, what's the drink? And next thing you know, we hear the next day about something that happened. And that's just what it was. And at the end of the day, B.I. wasn't, B.I. Ain't, we ain't diss niggas and we ain't foul. B.I. was hurt. Like, yo, my nigga, I fuck with y'all. Why y'all, why y'all dissing me? You know what, you know what that whole situation was? What? Because for the Get Money remix. You could be as good as the best of them, but as they must have had the song before we knew they had the song, and B.I. used the song, right? So be clear who we talking about. We talking about OGC. OGC, yeah. It was a, this was a group that was out in the late nineties, yeah, uh, mid nineties, and they had they must have had did that song too, and they must have felt like we jacked them, but we didn't. 
First of all, we both jacked somebody because right. that hook is from a Jamaican song. That's right. So <laughs> right. We kind of both took the song. Right. B.I. is Jamaican. He, I'm sure he didn't hear the record or didn't know that because we wouldn't do something that somebody else did. You know what I mean? Right. So, but without us knowing that, they just went out the window and just straight made a video, like dissing us, you know, kicking us off the stage. And I like, treat us like we was like, B.I. was hurt behind that. Like, he probably wanted attention too. Uh, that's all that video. I was respect, I, I was in prison and saw that video MCV. And then I heard, then I got the call. So don't worry about it. Them niggas got worked over. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's that way. That's just how yeah. You know that's just how things happen. But yeah. I'm sitting, sitting back, just sitting like yo, that's what happened. And you hear things. Uh, but this is how niggas was running around in the '90s, man. That's why they called the grimy '90s. Some shit was uh, was really raw back then. It was <laughs> different. <laughs> okay, I'm, here's a, I, I'm, I'm gonna throw another one at you. This is a uh, folklore. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> it's folklore. I'm gonna just throw this at you. It's, it's stuff that's just hanging. Whoa. You know, you just hear shit and just uh-huh. in, the, in the back corridors of a of a dorm room somewhere. Did y'all pack Sean up? Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, you missed no. the facial expression before. No. Nah, shout out to my nah, like. nah, shout shout to my dog Sean, Did man. Nobody pack Sean up. Nah. <laughs> 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 no, it was a situation that happened in the city with Sean. I like Sean, man. Yeah, I love I like Sean. Sean. Man. I, got, I like Sean. My first time going to Rackers Island. That's who held me down when I, I went like to Rackers Sean. Island, man. And I, 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 I love what he. He's transitioning. First motherfucker, I, when I went to jail, he's the first one that taught me how to put my thing up to cover my cell. Right. <laughs> how, to do, how to do shit. Yeah, it's the first one. When I first got locked up for a case, I had my first time. I was on the island for a month. And I was at C95 first. That's when they had the NIC building. Right. And that's I where Sean it. was at. So when they have, when they finally got a bed there, they sent me with him. But then they thought me and him was beefing. So they wouldn't send me upstairs with him. And I was like, yo, nah, me and Sean ain't got no problems. Like, ask him. He went made a call up there. He was like, yo, no, I ain't got no problems with C's. And they sent me up there like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I was locked up with him for like two and a half weeks. And then I see. But uh, him and him and Rock had an altercation. Oh, shout out to D-Rock. Come on, one time. Shout out to my boy. Shout out to D-Rock. D-Rock. Yeah. Let us know. They, they had a little altercation, but it was like, it wasn't no crazy was situation like that. But people around it you got a little physical situation though. more than what it was. You got a little yeah. physical though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it was something like, nothing, nothing crazy, crazy like that, but... Yeah, it was definitely oh uh, we we had an altercation with him too. So. Yeah, yeah, I heard. Yeah, I was making y'all rounds. God damn, bro. Like, yeah, <laughs> I heard. Y'all was making y'all rounds. Yeah, I mean, but that's what was oh, dog, that's what was happening back then. This is like, you know, this is real deal type of beef. Not no internet beef where you beefing with somebody and they're gonna get on the internet, talk about you the next day, and then you respond thirty minutes later on the internet. No, this was like real situations the way it was like a Where well, you really see when people. I see you. Yeah, when I yeah. When I see There's you, no you, phone to you don't know how nobody feel because right. you don't speak to them. It's, you don't you, get the you, magazine until next time. You, right. you don't get on the ready. radio. You don't know how they feel about that record or that line. And then next thing you know, you might bump into somebody. And you contain that energy. Yeah. <laughs> you contain that energy. No magazine. A, yeah. Magazine come out two months later. You st- no internet. <laughs> Nobody. No, no, it's no, it's, it's no telegraphing. Yeah. Right? You had to really be about your business. You get drama on impulse right now. Niggas send you something somebody said to you in a matter of seconds. I could just say something about Mano right now. Yeah. Three minutes later, he could get that shit right, right now. And it wasn't the- like that. It was yeah. a two month, it was a two month gap. You had to wait, like, yo, word, you when you said that? Wait now, for the vibe to put totally, it out. He done totally forgot about that shit. like, yo, what I said? I said that about who, two months ago? Mm-hmm. Nah, but, all right, it's that energy then. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just a real different Ball game. So man. y'all broke the dude jaw from. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I was at the studio, man. I was with B. Okay, but that's. <laughs> I was at the studio. I'm that's just, my. Uh, hey, listen. I was at the studio. <laughs> I heard. This is what I'm just saying. This Steve's is was some at the of studio. those. This is some of that. This is some of those tales that you just. You just, you just yeah. get, you know and what I mean? Want, you one of them type of, you want, I, you want I'm that. getting them, you know, I'm calling home. <laughs> I'm calling home. I'm trying to see what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Like, I'm calling Shorty, and, I'm, and I got her, you know, doing three ways. Sino locked up. You know what I mean? Yo, call Dubo. Like, call, 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 call yo, who, who out there? Like, 
Yo, put, P, you know what I'm saying? P, I'm, know, yeah, like, call, I'm calling around. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm getting. I'm getting pieces of stories, man. Yeah. You know? Wow, that's that was a, that was that was a legendary. You know how crazy time. it is when I met him when he first came home. Me not knowing too much, but my sister knew more about him yeah. than I did. You yeah. know what I mean? Because my sister's like, I went to school with him. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So just to show you how long the history goes yeah, the without history. me and him ever meeting each other, our yeah. history was already like. But we didn't always have great times. We had an up and down, but that's what the, brought us to the Lloyds today. Yeah, you know the what I mean. Lloyds. <laughs> he didn't see my sister go. Yo, Leo sees her right there. Yeah, that's my sister. Right there. That's a fact. So you know, that's what made me understood our situation was like a you know you grew up with somebody in your block and you just like. All right, nigga, we got to fix things a certain way, nigga. We going to scrap right. up, and after that, you dap. All right, nigga, yeah. We good. good. Yeah, you know? I miss those days. When niggas Nowadays, don't really you don't get them days. No, you don't get she want to do that with me. I, I That's what you want to do? You. I was <laughs> he bothered me all the time, and I always tell him, square up, but you know. But she do? you miss those days, because, you know, I'm from the hood, too. I'm I'm from Red Hood. Yeah. But you know, like... You the fight. projects is right yeah. it's only the projects. The projects, right? yes. So it's only the just the peas right yes. there. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Y'all don't count none of the other little blocks that's right else. there. Nope. Red Hook is just the it's projects. It's just the projects. That's it. But you know, you fight it out. Y'all argue or whatever, you fight it out, and then y'all back to being friends. Like, that's how it, it was. Sounds, me, it sounds when we was really beefing. We had seen each other. He had ride up on my car, and I'm like, oh, here go this thing. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Why, dog? What, what's wrong? <laughs> right? You know? But this is how you just have to treat just the situation. Just a mad, right? angry nigga. Yeah, but yeah. I, once, like I said, once you under, no, this is where he came from. He came from doing the stuff. Like, so I, it's a, you know, when you understand something, you just get it. Because I grew up around the rocks and the gutters. I deal with this type of aggression. So, yo, my nigga, what's wrong Extra with you? Extra aggressive, you? nigga. What like, you do? What? What? See, I'm like, yeah, just a like, pussy, my nigga. Like, relax. <laughs> Why are you so angry? But I, I, we could talk about that yeah. now, and we could really joke yeah, about it. Like, yo, my nigga, like this is what, this is how it used to be, and and, and we live right, ne- we live literally next to each other. You just mm-hmm. I went to asshole. school with Mousy. Like I used to go hang out with his brother when I was in two fifty eight. I was mm-hmm. with him when I was a kid, getting the fights at the Palladium, 13, 14. So I already knew the history of what it was. I knew it wasn't, you know. It's like all right, it's only gonna, yeah. But his mentality was all right. It's cool, but we got to just, like, go in the park real quick, you know? <laughs> but I needed that type of mentality, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just need something just to let you know. Get us, right, to get us from one to point get, to the next. You know what I mean? You had so to deal with that for 10 yeah. years, 11 yeah, a lot years of that. in jail to deal mm-hmm. with a whole different kind of animal mm-hmm. and different kind of beast. Right. So sometimes, you know, people are coming to your life to teach you different things. That's you right. Know what I mean? So I look at that like That's right. that That's was right. like a situation for me to learn. And, and, to, and we learn. And, and, learn. and appreciate how good I had things because my man was really trying to keep me away from shit. Speaking and, you know, of that, keeping you away from shit. Big dot. Oh, thank you. An untimely death. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Unfortunate for Brooklyn. Unfortunate for the game. For sure. Where did that leave you? Because now... Hold us. You're not, you're not just little C's big little man but you you little seized with with a record career where did that leave you now oh shit i was fucked up from there man um i believe just for a little while i didn't know what i was gonna do because uh you know bi played a major part not just in you know not just in my career but just as my in my life i'm saying like that was really like my that was the big brother to me i was the big uncle i was like my pops you know what I mean? So I was 17 when he passed. And I was with him, too, in the car. You know what I mean? So the witness that shit, too, was a little different you for me. You was in the car when it happened? I was in the seat behind him. He in the passenger seat. I'm in the back seat behind him. And D-Rock was behind the driver. Do you, rem- do you remember Hell yeah. what y'all was talking about prior to that? We was talking about going back to Cali. What you Rock mean? just Rock just smacked him on the back of his Rock just hit him on the back of his neck. It was like, you back, baby. We was playing going back to Cali. Playing that one of my favorites. We was playing the album on the CD. Right. We had the album on the CD, just skimming through it, just playing. Right. It. And we just played hypnotized in the club for like 20 times. They ran that shit in there in the hole. And everybody was rocking. As soon as we got in the truck, Rock tapped that nigga. It was like, you back, boy. He tapped him on his back. You know, B.I., that Gemini nonchalant shit, you know, with the Versace's on. Neck <laughs> laid back. He was like, yeah, yeah. No regular shit, you right. know. I'm out the window as I usually be. Right. There's some stragglers on the block. 
I'm out the window. Yo, what's good? Hey, you know, I'm with, I'm, I'm with Big Papa. I'm with the biggest nigga in the city. And he, in a matter of minutes, when we got caught at that light, a car just pulled up and just started shooting in that motherfucker, dog. And the first thing we did where we from is you just all got down in the truck. I talked to I talked to uh, Rock about this before, and he said to me, he said, after the shots went off, Big didn't say anything. Nothing. Like, he didn't say, oh, shit, oh, nothing. fuck. Nothing, not a man, word. Nothing, not one word. It was it was just complete silence. Yeah. We knew it was hit because his, his door, the only one that didn't open. After the shot stopped, all of us got out and went to the back of the truck. Right. He like, still was in. Everybody hitting themselves, you know. You know, you that's saying they in the hood, you could be hit and not know it when you hit. You know what I mean? Right. So we all back there tapping, especially me. I was right behind them, dog. You know what I mean? I'm right. So I'm just, when we tap back and look at the door, the door didn't open was the passenger side door. That's when we all ran back to the truck. And B.I. was just leaned over the console. He was leaned over towards, yeah, towards, towards the, the driver. Towards the driver, yeah, over the console, just like eyes wide. Open. Ain't say a word though. He wasn't conscious. Even when at they all. start shooting, you ain't hear no ouch, no oh shit. We didn't hear nothing. He, we all just in the car, just like, oh shit. You hearing that shit ricochet and hit windows and he say nothing. We just jumped right back in the truck. We just jumped in. And the security guard from um from Puff Truck jumped in ours because he he's from LA. Excuse me. So he knew where the hospital was. Right. So he jumped in and was see like the, see the sign now. Yeah. So he was he conscious like not he wasn't even conscious. His eyes, his eyes were just open for a little minute. By the time we got to the hospital, and we took him out the car, no consciousness, eyes closed, done, dead weight, to where like six, seven of us had to pick him up and uh, take him to the hospital. I didn't even go inside the hospital. I didn't go inside not one time. I stayed outside the whole time. I didn't walk in there until they told me he was uh they pronounced him dead. They called me in. Did you feel like he might have been dead already? Yeah. When they pulled him out the truck, it was just no, you know. I didn't think that, though. Of course, when you said, you know, you're just thinking maybe he's he just con- yeah. yeah, I'm not thinking he's dead, but, uh, you know, they say when you pass away, you, you urinate. And you, right. You, know, you shit on yourself. I saw that wet spot on his, on his pants when they was actually picking him up. Because I was no use to getting them out of there, so I just sat back and watched a bunch of grown-ass men, you know, get them out the car, put them on the stretcher. You saw a wet spot on his leg. And you felt like that was the the uh, urine. Just by knowledge, you know, you hear these stories. I I done heard these stories before where we come from. Right. But not thinking that. You're still just not. That's not in your mind. I'm not thinking like, oh, I'm thinking B.I.'s. This 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 is Biggie, dog. You know, like, nah, he good. No, he ain't seen no blood from his head. You ain't seen no blood from his neck or chest. Because he wasn't bleeding. So it was like an eternal bleeding. So you really didn't see no... I'm just thinking like, ah, right, he probably got shot in the side. He good. And nah, when they came back outside and they came and got me, Um, they took me in the room. Everybody was laid down on the floor. D-Rock, Mark Pitts, crying like like little kids. And now they didn't even have to say nothing. And this just really... happened just so fast because y'all was just... In the club. At the party, Chill. partying, healthy, good, laughing, proud, happy, yeah. and just in a matter of... A matter of seconds. You walk seconds. outside, your life changed, bro. Yeah. I haven't uh, been out to a club in L.A. since then. Mm. I haven't hung out in the club 25 years. Mm. I haven't been to a club since then. Even I, And I go to L.A. all the time. I, I love the city. I love the vibe. I love it, but... I just never felt, I just never felt good, you know, walking into a club and walking out of it. Because last time I walked out of a club, you know, that's what happened. So I never, anybody can tell you they saw me in the club after 1997, March 9th, they lying to you. I in never L.A., you talking a about? Club. Yeah. And that's, when, and that's nothing to the city, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love the city, I love the vibe, but, you know, that was just that one thing that just still sticks to me about, you know. They say y'all was getting death threats while y'all was there prior to the... Yeah, we was. But we was getting those in New York, too, though. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah, we was getting those back home. They was calling the crib and the who, house phone. Who was doing that? Just people. We don't know who it was. They would just call our phone and whisper on the phone and, ah, we going to kill you. And Was it OGC? 
<laughs> you annoy. I don't know if it's OGC. <laughs> nah, I, I mean, I don't know what it was, but we've been getting them shits for a while. You know what I mean? So they used to always come. But, you know, you're young. You're just thinking that's just somebody hating or just somebody playing on the phone. That didn't, didn't scare you at all? Like, just thinking, like, what if niggas is really telling the truth? Like, what if niggas is out for us? Like, we I mean, outside. I was, like, I was more adapting to the surroundings. So if if, if, if I got like these people protected. around me ain't tripping, you they like, like, yo, that yeah. shit ain't nothing. I'm going to look at it like it's nothing. You know what I mean? If they not sitting there, you know, acting like it's something crazy, I'm not going to act like it was nothing crazy. So I just felt like it was just like a, who the fuck would do that, though? You know what I mean? When you're sitting around niggas, niggas like, yo, who the fuck going to sit there and threaten you over the phone and like, right. not thinking nothing of it. You know, I'm just thought it was just like some music yeah. shit. Like, all right, you know, motherfuckers be sending you threats and lying and shit like that, not thinking nothing of it. I mean, shit, at that time, the feds supposed to have been watching us, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you're thinking, I would more think that was police more than anybody than to think it was an right. enemy. Because what enemy would sit there and make it blatantly that and he want to do something to phone. you or play on your shit like that and leave a trace or anything, you know what I mean? So we didn't take it, we didn't take it seriously at all. Big didn't. It wasn't about me. B.I. didn't, you know, he didn't think nothing of it, you know. B.I. was very, like, you know, naive to that shit because his, his whole thing was... And I'm living until they, until it happens. I'm gonna live my life, and that's how B.I. was. B.I. didn't care about none of that shit. Everybody told him don't go to L.A., but that's where he wanted to be. Mm-hmm. That's why I always tell people like, "Yo, yo, why he went to L.A.?" I said, "Cause that's where he wanted to be." Mm. You can't stop somebody from doing what they want to do. Yo. Absolutely. That's where he wanted to be. He wanted to be out there. We supposed to left. He wanted to stay there. And I'm just a. It's a soldier that's just there. So whatever he want to do, I'm doing it with you, bro. Fuck it. I'm here for the affair. You know what I mean? So whatever you want to do, I'm only here on the strength of you. Only thing I could do is just sit here and PYP, play my position, man, and ride for the cause. And that's all I did. Mm. Um, After Big Dot, and this is the question that I wanted to get to, You already had success with Players Anthem and the Conspiracy album. Now you little C's from the Junior Mafia. You actually are a rapper in your own right. Where's your career now? Because now you 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 you're gonna put an album out at some point. What 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 was the plan and what was the thinking behind actually taking what you had already um, built up with him and now doing your own thing. To my after he passed from after that, he that passed, point. Yeah. Um, after that, uh, you know, Big always had a plan of doing this album for me called uh, Puppy Love. You know, one day we was in Chicago and we uh, did a show. It was for a high school, and um, it was like wild, like little young kids. But it was big show. It wasn't my show, and um, I used to always perform with him as a youngster. So we went to that show. We performed this high school. These girls going crazy, pulling my shit, going crazy for me. And B.I. was watching that shit and was like, right? So once we got back like to the hotel, he was like, yo, I'm about to write you an album. It's going to call Puppy Love. Mm. He was like, no niggas going to like you. Mm. Like, You're going to be just for bitches. What the fuck I'm going to say? <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, my nigga. I got the, <laughs> all right. The best nigga going to write some rhymes for me? Cool. No problem. So that's how I even got invented into becoming a a rapper. I was just like a, a idea. I was entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so Straight so up. after he died, how did you get to the point where you actually put out an album? Because you put out an album that was really a good album. Because I was already, you know, he already he already put me in the mix already. Right. With the Junior Mafia project. Think about the Junior Mafia <laughs> album, right? I was only on two songs on that album. If you really listen mm. to it. Right, right, right. I was right. only on Realms of Junior Mafia and right. Players Anthem. I was right. on two songs out of an album of 14 songs. Mm. I was on the video of Players Anthem. Right. Right? And then they shot the video to get money. I wasn't on that, but I was on the remix. You was on the I, remix I was to get money, right. Yeah. Right. I was, but you was on the right I was getting though. tested into how can we get them on records? How can we work them? Whenever Big wrote me a rhyme and I could recite it, I did it. I know you hear me on but the radio. he knew, like, True. yeah, that was <laughs> yep. on Kim's album. But it was a I big record. Yeah. That I was w- the only solo record I done, right? That was already on deck for me to record, go. 
I was just coming to the studio and big like, yo, can you recite this? Can you say this? Can you say this? And so big yeah. wrote all your rhymes at this point. Yeah, yeah. You didn't. Bro, you wasn't. Yeah, anthem. Get money. You didn't. You didn't yeah. have no. You wasn't writing nothing. Uh, you didn't. I'm you just, never because you never dreamed about or thought about being a rapper. So I thought about being a rapper, but I never thought about actually being a rapper. Like, <laughs> got it, got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I want to be that, but never thought about what the do reality. it takes to do that? You know what I'm saying? And and B, I just. Somebody grab him so we can right, man, right? Please. He's about to lose his, lose his mind. You never thought about being a, 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 a rapper, a rapper, but you. I want no. to be. No. That's not me. Migos. Give me what you got, though. What you offered me earlier. What you offered me earlier. It's gone. <laughs> 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 Yo, I keep thinking when I hear that, I'm thinking it's my phone, right? Because I got the headphones all the way on. Um, yeah, so I was like a... So uh, how, after he died, you don't have him to write for you no more. Now what? So what I did was, right, I'm going to tell you the whole story with that. Um, Kelly Price. Kelly mm. Price. Right, shout out to Kelly Price. She nice. wanted me to get on the record for her, right? She's paying me $5,000. And she was like, you know, first I was telling her, like, yo, you ain't got to pay me because I'm going to need you for my album. You know how right. that shit go. Right. Yo, tick for tack. Like, right. oh, it's freebie. You lace me, I'll lace you. She was like, nah, I want to give you some money. I got a budget. You know, budget was very major back then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got some money to actually give somebody to. Nowadays, you get a budget. It's strictly for your album. Like, nigga, yo, dog, show me some love. I might squeeze you a little 15 out this shit for a <laughs> But really, budget's tight right budget now. for the album. Back then, you had real budgets. So I was like, you ain't got to pay me. She's like, you're not. My budget is good. I want to give you something. So at that time, I was like, damn, you know, who the fuck going to write my verse for this fucking project and shit? Like, you know, I'm in, I'm in the crib with a bunch of writers. Kim, you know, a few of my niggas from Junior Mafia, Trife, you know, lost in them. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to write my rhyme this time myself because I wanted that five stacks for me. <laughs> you feel me? You would have had to share it, though. I could have went to Mace to write that verse for me. <laughs> I was like, nah, Mace got bread. I need this five. Mace <laughs> might not, he might not even go half with me on this shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, you know what? I'm going to write this shit myself. So I sat back and I, taught, I, I thought about everything big taught me how to rhyme. He used to always try to get me to write songs. Like, yo, you ain't got to be as nice as me, bro. Just think about the melody. Just think about saying something, but saying it in the cool way. It's not about what you say. It's how you say it. Mm. So I was like, okay, I get that. Because I used to always try to be as nice as him. Say all these crazy... No, don't try to compete with me, little bro. You would never get the way I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how, but you just... Think about it. So I wrote... I, I did... She, she gave me a, a song. And it was like two eight bars. So I did it. Recorded it, and I played it for Kim. And Kim was like, you wrote that? She was like, I was like, yeah, I wrote that. She was like, that shit fire. I was like, worry, you like it? <laughs> right? Went downstairs to Money L. Yo, L, I kicked that shit to Money L. Money L was like, yo, son, you wrote that shit, son? <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. He like, that shit hard. After that, that's all it took for just somebody just to amp me. To gain like, that confidence. Nigga, yeah, nigga, that shit lit. I'm like, word. And it was just really just a melodic sound. I wasn't right. trying to write the craziest shit. It was, I was just trying to make that shit sound dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. And once Kim said it was dope and my boy said it was dope, I pocketed that five grand. <laughs> you know what I'm and I started writing rhymes from there on. Right? Yeah. That was like my, that was my cue right there to where it's like, okay. You know, now I learned, but it was just all the things that B.I. B. used to teach me. It's like, yo. You don't got to say the craziest shit. Just say some dope shit. You know, in between a 16, I just need four little lines that might be, woo, and that's it. The whole shit, though, this is how he used to tell us how to rhyme. He used to always try to get us to write songs. Like, yo, just write a song. I don't, don't think about it being super crazy. Don't think about it being on the Jay-Z level or my level or Nas level. He said, yo, just write. And whatever it is, trust me, I'll work around it. And that's when I just, you know. I started to learn how to do it from there. And that's when I, when I needed help. I'll go downstairs to Kim. Kim helped me jot down rhymes, too. She wrote rhymes for me before, too. You know what I'm saying? But that's how our crib was. You know, it was all of us living in one house. Right. Whoever had issues with rhyming, 
We would go to different rooms and everybody would just feed off each other. Bristol. That's Bristow. one person that helped Bristow. me, yeah. you know, develop my rap skills too because he was already rapping before, right. before I came around. Wait, so, y'all all yeah. lived in one house? Like, we all lived in one crib, yeah. And we saw sleep on the, it was only three rooms, but you would, you would swear it was eight rooms in that motherfucker. <laughs> we sleeping on top of pool tables, niggas. It's a, it's a fucking uh, bed on the balcony outside. Wow. Outside. We out there, we just all just lived in that one house because we all was just under one mission. Yeah. Everything was like, yo, we all gonna stay in one crib and we're gonna try to fulfill our dream and make this shit work. Nobody had no problem with shacking up, Sharing rooms. If 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 you got some action that night, you can have the room. If I ain't had no action, I'm gonna go for the couch. <laughs> yeah, that's your room tonight. It's my room, but tonight is your right, room. definitely because you got some action. You know what I mean? Like that's how we played our part with each other. So you basically wrote your whole first album. Yeah, I you, wrote I wrote seventy percent of it. Bruce you had Dow a, helped me write. You had a good first album, bro. Yeah. Like that was a thank you, dog. Um, you, one of my one of my one of my uh, one of my favorite joints is uh. Listen, late, late, season, Leo, the great. I think oh, need Trife. a lady, need a lady. Need a lady. That's Bang, need a lady. that's Bang, yeah. cousin Trife. Yeah, right, right. That was he that's... jotted down half. Of, he jotted down half of that song. For that that was he did the hook. That's he that's... did like the whole last verse. Right, you know that saying? was that was dope. You had a good first project, and it felt it felt really good because Kim had dropped right, and then she had dropped. I think her second album, and then right. you dropped. Yeah, it was right. She dropped her second album after that. That's why we did Play Around for the first single because she's supposed to drop her album right after that. Right. Okay. You know okay. So y'all was set up and that was a big record. Yeah. Play I wrote around. the Chicken Heads. That's supposed to be my first single. Oh, oh yeah. my album. Yeah. That was like my whole moniker. Right. Who right. I was supposed to be. Right. What I was. The you, fun. Let's get fun. High. You want to cover Girl, basically, basically negative. Yeah, that's negative. right. The can go on with right. three chains. Yeah. That's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be the fun, cool guy of my group. I'm not the gangster. No, I'm not the hooligan. No, I'm the fun motherfucker. If you want to have some fun, fuck some chicks, get high, probably try some other shit, some some E and some shit like that. No, because I watch your shit. You talking about Molly? Hey. So I, I, I caught the E error. Hey. I caught the ecstasy error, which is like the same thing. As the, no, you, I was crying, laughing, dog, when I watched that shit. You talking about? You, did they grab the water firsthand? I said, yo. Yeah, these are. He had a moment. They drop out. Yeah, yeah, that moment. He had these moments. Real. But yeah, that was my first album, my only album I did. You know what I mean? And um, I'm working on another one now, though. We're doing part two now. Well, so let me we're ask trying you. to get it together. Let me ask you. There was a lot of momentum in, in, these, in these days. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you was, you was doing shows. A lot, lot was happening. You was making money. Why not do another album back then? What happened? I mean, you had puff around you. You got everything around you. You got everything that that basically big big left. You know, y'all all one one hap, one big family. Uh, I mean, life start happening. Real life. You know, I mean, things change. I can't speak for everybody else, but you know, at that time after the album came out, uh, you know, we just was going. You know, we were just living through some real fucked up times. We was getting caught up in a bunch of shit. You know. You didn't have cases. that shelter anymore. All right, cases. So it was like reality hit and it's like, this yeah. is real life. I still got to hustle. I still got to do this. I still got to do that. Yeah, but outside of that, before that, though, you know, we was all a unit. So we always had each other's shoulders to, you know, to ride off her. But it was at one point to where a lot of things started happening, like personally, you know, financially. Right, you right. Know, right. We started catching cases. Shit started right, happening. Cases, you know, we yeah. started catching them cases and, you know, we was getting, after Big Dog, the dudes I was around, you know, became like very aggressive about everything. Right. You know, pulling them things out anytime, no matter who's around. See, he's around, Kim around. Some shit happened. What shit happened? going down. And we was getting caught up, like he said, from the radio station. Shootouts, you know, Delphi Avenue. Well, Delphi Avenue. Happened Myrtle. There. These right. are shit that never left us. So for a long time, them cases would still linger. Then you have little minor situations. And a lot of time, we was getting arrested, going to jail. And, you know, Paying for lawyers, not just for me, but just for the even your crew people. You know what I mean? When you got people that's really riding behind your cause, they they're not rappers, but they're people that really genuinely care about you. That's out there putting out work for you, and you got to make sure they good. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the gutters and the money elves that was out there, right. like really doing stuff. We just had some really bad times, and it started to affect us personally. And then a bunch of things started happening. And um, the last thing we was thinking about was music. Was music. <laughs> you know and saying? you didn't like, get a chance to make. To get back in a creative mode, to make music again, 
Yeah. Because of the, because of life, because of the circumstances and all, you know, a lot of a lot of the tribulations and, and a lot of stuff happened. And I didn't know about a lot of this. So I'm still learning all this shit because right. I'm so used to having things at ease. It's like now I have to learn to do things on my own and this person ain't here to do it for you or that person ain't here to do it for you. So a lot of things right. started to change and I, and I had to learn how to adapt to that and I didn't. For a while I didn't know how to adapt when you know none of my dudes around, you know, I was you know, L away. Others in jail, rockers in jail, Kim don't speak to me, Puff ain't treating me too well. So it's like, what the fuck do I do from there? So I'm trying to figure it out from there. And that was just some years to where that's the last thing I was thinking about was music. I'm still trying to think about how to survive on the streets now because I'm no longer in that comfort zone no more of having that luxury of all these people around to make sure I'm good. My family was the one holding me down at that point. You know what I mean? What about Puff? Uh, nah. Wasn't you know we didn't really have no no relationship at that time. At that time, nah. You wind up having a relationship later later on. We got a cool relationship at this time. It's not the same as it used to be, right. and um, I don't think it never will be. But at the end of the day, it it shouldn't. It don't have to be that. Because at the end of the day, I knew Puff do Bi, so I don't expect him to do what Bi done for me. You right. get what I'm saying? Right. Like yeah. sometimes people would think like, all right, well he put big on, he should do that for you. Right, nah, my nigga. That was B.I. situation. And I was extended from that. You know right, what I mean? Right. And, you know, that shit expired. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he, 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 was a, he played a part in your album, though. No doubt. Yeah, he did my album. He was, he was, he was an integral part of your album. So um, after the album, you didn't feel like he was somebody that you could be around creatively or whatever, for whatever reason? I mean, at that time, when I tried to... Uh, Reach out to him at that time when I was really going through them times. I wasn't getting, you know, the response. I wasn't, I wasn't getting that response like that. Right, right. And um, I said things about that. You know, I said things about him too. You know, in the right. dark I did. You know, I'm, I'm not per. I said things about him too that I wasn't too comforted and too cool with what I was saying. You right. know what I mean? And um, I learned from that shit and I manned up about it. You know, because that wasn't. I, I didn't think I handled it properly. But you know, once I grew up, I realized that. He just, I, you know, as a man, he wasn't supposed to do certain things for me that I thought he should do for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I said, B.I. was my man that I came from the turf with. I didn't come up from the turf with Puff. And what? he changed, he helped change B.I. life, but just what he done for Big, that didn't mean he's supposed to do that same thing right. for me. Right. And that's the one thing a lot of people got to get in their head. Don't think because... Sometimes two people can have a relationship. Y'all can have a relationship within yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But then I can have a relationship with him. But right. that don't mean you need to treat me how he treated me because you're cool with him. Mm -hmm. You get mm. what I'm saying? So once you I start, don't, you don't owe me. He don't owe me none. And I said that in the song. Like, you don't have to treat me like how Big treated me. Mm. And once I realized that, I was like, you know what? I said things out of order. I, I shouldn't even expected that. Mm -hmm. I expected him as a. The history we had, I expected him when he seen that I was. So you a, expected crazy more. Did you, place. It was a I would time expect you just more. to extend your hand or just to be like, "Yo, what up, little bro? You good?" Just from the history, and when that didn't happen, I spoke about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, you know, and of course it strained our relationship for a minute, but then, you know, we got that shit back right like a couple of years after. But y'all good today? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Oh yeah. Why did he, why did you and um Kim stop speaking? Uh me and Kim stopped speaking? Mm -hmm. Just personal shit. You know, just with the crew. It's a lot of, you know, shit that you know you just can't speak on for right. other people. But right. obviously you could tell it wasn't that bad because we we, we squashed it to this day. Family you know shit. I mean? There was some yeah, footage of y'all I, I think I saw you when y'all got back. How did y'all how did that how did y'all get back? Um well, I, I you know I always been trying to you right. know, I've been trying to reach out to Kim for years, you know, just to try to you know just amend that you know situation we had, and uh, I could never get through to her. She wasn't right. ready, and uh, I remember like I think like three years ago, she did an interview on Flex, and I was doing the show with Kiss in Connecticut. We were right. driving back, and Flex asked her a question about me. And that was the first time I actually heard Kim like actually respond to somebody that says something about me. Usually, she just won't say nothing. And uh, she was Kim know how to hold a grudge. <laughs> Kim, yeah. the one that she know how to hold a grudge. That's for the real. cancer. That's yeah. the cancer yeah. shit. For yeah. real. For real. Yes. 
fifties. They don't canceled let it go. Too. You, know, you gotta understand when you start to think about the whole history of a cancer. Right. Think about they it take shit to the yes. Yeah. They don't let it go. And at one point, I had to just sit back and go, stop forcing it, and just let let it work out. Let it play out the way it's supposed to play out. I stopped speaking on it. I stopped trying to reach out. It was just like you know, because I would speak to people that knew her, or you know, we right. went into they like right. yo, just yeah. give us some time, let her chill. And I just stopped one day. I was like, I'm just leave it alone. And I was coming back from Connecticut. And she was talking about uh, interview. She was talking to Flex about the interview. And she was just talking about how I used to be always asking for money to the, the older heads when we was like in the hood when I was young. And Flex was like, yo, you're not, why are you saying that about him? She was like, you're not, trust me. He know it's cool. He know it's cool. And right after that, I had a number on her. She didn't know I had a number on right. her. And I texted her and I was like, y'all heard that interview. You know, It was dope to hear you talk like that. And she was like, she sent back, we'll link soon. Wow. And then from there, like about a month later, we all got on the phone, me, her, and Un, shout out to Un. Oh, shout and out to uh, Un, man. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Lance shout Rivera. And that's how Un. we, and from there on, we talked, and we did the first Biggie dinner, which was two right. years ago. And we all got together, every every nine members of Junior Mafia, everybody that had a part with us getting I, the deal. I, 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 I always wished I was there. Supposed <laughs> I to always there, wished I was there, though, like... <laughs> You know what I, mean? I wanted to be there, man. Like that was so major right there. This when y'all got back together. Yeah. Um, how are y'all today? We good. We just rocked up. Me and I just did the AIDS walk in Fort Lauderdale. Um, really? Like about a month ago and shit. So, you know, we kick it. You know, we still talk. Yeah, yeah, talk. We were trying to do the. We were trying to do the dinner this year, and we're gonna still do it. We just pushing it back so you can make this one. <laughs> we still. We not doing you it. You might be the, first. You might be the only one to invite me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got, got kicked out the whip. There. We got nah, dog. We gotta get you there. But uh, we trying to do it this year because we missed last year for COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, because all the shit was going on with the COVID and the pandemic stuff. So we definitely trying to get it done. We trying to make it some annually. We do every year just for something, you know, just to get everybody together. That be our love. That be our fucking right, that right. Be, and know, it's good to see though that he influenced too. You know, far as like just the artist wise. You know, what I mean, the first time we did it, Fat Joe, the Locks. You know, I like Busta, to see this, man. I like love. to see this, man. I like to see this. Like definitely, you said, definitely. You know what I mean? And coming back around full circle. Now, you came. Um, I don't. This definitely wasn't the last time I saw you, but one of, one of the last times I saw you was uh, we had something going on at the store at Threads. Yeah, yeah. On, on um, you know, on Ocean around my way, you pulled up. You and Bristow pulled up. You and Banger, shout out to Banger. No doubt. Shout um, out to BA. And we talked about. Music, and I told y'all like, nah, you chopped it up with me for real about that. I shit. said, get yeah. start doing the music, like no as far as like the mafia, start doing the music, y'all all together, start doing the music. No doubt. I know from as a fan, as a fan of 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 that era, as a fan of 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 that legacy, I would like to see a junior mafia project. With Kim attached to that, no doubt. Is the, it, can that happen? Yeah, facts. It's gonna definitely happen too. It's gonna definitely happen. We mm -hmm. already been jotting down some records, you know. You know We've been putting down some joints. We got some features. Me and you talked about that. So of we course, already, of course. You know what I'm saying we already talked about that, and that was like one of the real conversations I did have with you at right. that point where we was coming to that. Yeah. We sat in front of the store, and you That's was like, right. "Yo, my nigga, that music, man. Fuck with that music. Yeah, with that I told music. you." You know what I mean? I so we definitely you. working on something. It's just that the pandemic slowed things up, you know. A lot of the people from my group, done, you know, they living, you know, family, kids, you know, all this stuff going whenever, on. Whenever y'all can. And you know you know about my boy Briss, you know, you went, you, um, you, you know, you went to see Little Brother Day. Definitely, you know I mean? went to see Briss today. Oh, shout out to Briss. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's... You, wanna... you can, yeah, yeah, you can. Um, shout out to Bristow. Mr. Bristow, y'all know him for, uh, from... Um, Records with the Mafia, you don't want to play around uh, from the Biggie record. Um, he battling cancer, um, and um, it's it's definitely serious. And I went to see him today because, and I told him the day that I surprised him, and Word. and and I told him that I came there because when I came home from prison, he was one of the first persons to 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 do a record with me, and. He did a song with me at a time when nobody, I was basically nobody in the music business, mm -hmm. and he didn't have to, and I always remembered that. 
Now, we didn't speak every day, but I always had a certain type of love for him. And I always remembered that because yeah, at that point, genuine, man. right, at that point, he was on the radio. He had records and songs with y'all. And, you know, he had songs with Platinum. Like, he was a part of Platinum shit, yeah. right? So I always remembered that. And I told him the day that, you know, that that's part of his good karma because in life you never know how you – how you touch people. Touch people. And then that and in that moment of me getting out of prison and being on parole and me trying to be a rapper and get out of the street, that That was one t- of the moments. Right, that yeah. was one of those moments for me. So so definitely shout out to Mr. Bristow, man. Get get well. Um keep Hell, believing. Bro. And like I told him, keep believing, keep fighting. Um I would love you did that. You made yeah. my day when you told me that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I told you and I, I, and I never knew y'all history like right, that. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Like, Definitely. just our history alone. Yeah. I knew Mano knew him, but not right. to that. You know, just right. from talking to Sino and me telling Sino that every day, trying to get me to come up here. I'm like, yo, Sino, I'm, I'm back and forth, driving my boy back and forth to the hospital, his family, you know, because he, he dealing with something. Man. He yeah. Like, yo, man, want to holler at you. And then, man, yeah. like, yo, like, yo, he looked out for me when I was... Yeah, he did. He said, yo, can I go see him? I said, yo, I'm going to set that up so you can go see him. So, you know what I mean? He did. Appreciate you for that. He need all that. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and sometimes we need those surprise people to come to remind life, us man. of yeah. how important and how, how, how impactful we are. Because I know him seeing me, because he kept looking at me and going, like, he couldn't, he just couldn't yeah. really believe <laughs> that I was sitting in there. And it was just like, you know, and I just wanted to give him some energy, no, and I wanted bro, to, I wanted, I wanted, to, I wanted that, nah, thank you, you know and mean? I wanted, I wanted because that's how, I, that's how you get my, that's how you get blessings, you know what I mean, like, no. you know, I wanted to give him some energy, I wanted to give him some words of encouragement, encouragement, and I wanted to tell him, you know, you know, people out here love him, and we didn't forget right. what you've done, so you impacted me, like you, you did something for me at a time when nobody knew, even knew knew my name, like a. A front master flex or anybody or anybody or all the people all, all the things that I wound up doing later on, nobody knew me. I was straight off <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the, yeah, the jail boat. Like, like you know what I'm saying? So that 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 always touched me. So for him, definitely. Um now that made his day, get, brother. Get well we, we soon, brother. You, Please man. keep Yo, fighting. Shout out to Bristow, man, you know. He fighting right now. And uh, you know, not to get into too much details, but my brother stage four. You know what I mean? But when there's a will, there's a way. And just like Mano pulled up, you know, I'm just hoping all my other comrades to pull up for him and, you know, just give them that, you know, that encouragement to keep fighting and stay alive, man. So I appreciate Definitely, you man. For doing nah. that, my brother. Because that made his day. And, you nah, know, with this COVID love. going on, you're going to have one person to go up there. Right. So just the fact that he made sure he, he stuck. <laughs> Dolo. <down there. laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Because you, you remember, you Dolo. hit me to come with you this morning. I'm yeah, like, I hit you early this morning. You were still like, asleep, bro, too. Yeah, I was like, yo, I missed your call earlier, <laughs> but only one of us could go. So it doesn't yeah. make no sense for me to come with you. Right. Only you can go up there. But, you know, Appreciate that, and um, you know, he gave me the opportunity and the permission to talk about it because I wanted people to understand what he's going through, so he right. could feel that love and know how you know people appreciate him and we love him, and he got a reason to fight. Yo, we losing a lot of people, man. So give you know, give people they love and you know, they flowers and, and they they flowers now, man. They can, definitely, know, man. Shout out to Black Rob, word, man. man. Shock G D M X. You know, we That's we've been definitely. suffering these losses like back to back to back. My road manager here. Which is Brisk's cousin. He just lost his wife. Wow. Uh, not within a month. You know what I mean? Not within a month. She was young too. You know what I mean? So, you wow. know. That's why it's important that we do stuff Bless. like this, man. We speak Definitely. on things and talk on things. And if nothing is too crazy that you can't get over, you know what I mean? You got to learn how to shake hands and thank God for still being here, man. Because shit could be worse. Wow. It's not yeah. worse, so I know. It could be a lot worse, man. So if you're still here, you're still alive, man. Please, man. Enjoy life. Best way you can and definitely do what you do, man. And on that note, man, I appreciate you, my brother, for pulling up to the kitchen. No doubt. Kitchen was banging. Break too, some man. bread with Thank me, you. man. No Break doubt. some bread with me, bro. Come Break on, some I got bread you, with me, though. You know how we coming, though. We got. We got Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Mr. Salmon? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm just going to take a piece and y'all can pack mine up. <laughs> see, I don't ever see the part when I watch it. I don't see this part when the food comes up. Ooh, come out every time, baby. Nah, this is how we coming, man. You know what it is. It's uh, kitchen salt. Salmon banging, man. Big, salmon look good, too. With the big shout top. out to Pearls Monroe, Lavish Lifestyles, Lavish Catering. You know, oh, shout out to the whole through. gang. Came Definitely came out. Big shout out to Lil C, Cesar Leo, oh, 
doubt, man. Um, yes, thank shout you. out to the whole Brooklyn. Y'all We're Brooklyn. And they rock. You yeah. Know, we connected in so many ways. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Shout out to my brother Mousy too, man. Definitely. He's my brother, you know, that's eight ball style. Mouse, Mouse. Mouse will be home you know in a minute. Um, yeah, nigga, I should go to eight ball two for mm-hmm. eight, my nigga. That's why I get my that's why I get my NA, NA rock stripes. I should <laughs> hang out with that guy. What's your what's your um your handle, your Instagram handle? Uh my handle is uh everything is Lil C's L I L C E A S E. That's my Twitter. That's my Instagram. My Facebook is my government, James Lloyd. I guess so. Yeah, it is. I mean, we public people. Yeah, this is all you know, man. I feel yeah. crazy asking you for your. I said, yo, dog, for that pass to go upstairs, I need your full name. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> send it right over, bro. <laughs> send it right over. I, right right over. Shit. I mean, because we, we we legit people, man. It's what we yeah. doing. We unchanged God. our life. This is what's going on, man. But uh, salute to you, man. Congrats on everything thank you, you're man. doing, brother. And uh, thank you for having me on this show, man. It's all love, man. You know what it is. Kitchen Talk ep- episode. What's episode? 43? Chase your dreams, man. Chase your dreams, Chase your baby. Dreams. Chase your dream, man. Love, baby. Love. Ah. Oh, God. <laughs> this is we some garbage.